next hardcore band to have their song featured in a Taco Bell commercial. I can see yeah. Fleshwater. Fleshwater, big time. Theirs are kind of dark sided, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Artist video game, original soundtrack, Bloodborne, the Old Hunters DLC. Dude, Doom. Oh my God. Doom Eternal. I'll tell you, Justin and I at Close Casket made a legitimate effort to put out the Doom Eternal soundtrack. On vinyl. Where's your ideal coffee order? Let's give each other's. Yours is a cold brew with a splash of half and half. His is a cold brew with oat milk and a little bit of vanilla. Touch. That's my guy. <laughs> Let's make history. Hello, welcome. It's hard lord time. How are you, bud? I'm doing so well. I'm in sunny Van Nuys. It's hot today. It's warm. It's 77 degrees outside. What are you going home to, temperature-wise? 30s. Cold. But it's January. I want it that way. You know? That's true. If, it's, if it was hot, you'd be upset. It's unnatural. You need to reset. Well said. I'll talk to you in June, see how you feel. It's not going to be good. <laughs> you were here in June. It wasn't good. Mm. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, Bo is here. We're live. From Hardlore HQ in Van Nuys, California. <laughs> and, you know, we just figured it would be fun to sit and chat this week. You know, have a nice Q&A, keep it casual. Yeah, we went to Vegas. We, we really did. We shot a bunch of cool stuff in Vegas that I think you guys are going to really like. Two of our best things. Pro- yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I was... I had... One was CBGBs, the other was heebie-jeebies, you know what I mean? And once we, once we really wow. figured it out, yeah, thank you. Well, once so. we figured it out, it was awesome. I had a great time. Uh, for both, really. For Cause, both, cause so, 100%. So, for context, both of these things would have taken way too long to have ready by this Thursday, and I didn't want to, like, smash them together as one thing. No. Because they're both so cool that they deserve their own spotlight. Yeah. But in Vegas, we went to both the Punk Rock Museum, which... I think we both probably had low expectations for. Yeah, when when you hear about oh they have like punk stuff, they, you're imagining not something very in depth. I imagine surface some forty one. Yeah, exactly. Offspring, etc. Yeah, yeah, that kind which of which is thing. like yeah, that's that's good stuff. Bangers. Yeah, for sure. So am I still waiting for this world to stop hating? Banger. Right. <laughs> no warning. The no warning. No warning. Song. Ever survived. <laughs> Banger. Uh, but we get there and there's like niche stuff it starts off with like four back-to-back hardcore rooms pretty yeah, much they like actual hardcore things that we would all agree are hardcore and then it's also it's cool because it's fat mike it's a bunch of other people who i wasn't personally familiar with except for lisa who was like the main person at warp tour like your contact our contact at warp Tour. so it's like it's still pretty punk and pretty cool and dude the people working were awesome oh loved them they were very accommodating. Very accommodating. They were like excited to have us there, even though they had no clue who no we clue. were, which was great. <laughs> yeah, the one girl, the first girl, I forget her name, but she was like, "You're with the podcast." All right. She was like, "Yeah, I know." And it was, but it was like, oh, "Okay, <laughs> can we come in?" She was like, "Yeah." Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, we didn't have a guide, so we were guiding ourselves. So maybe we'll be your guides in the future. We'll see. Yeah. So um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, we should just get out of the way. The gambling exploits because people are going to ask. We'll make it quick. Well, we were also there for AVN. Right, right, right. But I'm saying we gambled that night. Yeah. That first night? Yeah. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Look, guys, it's the first question here. Yeah. On the QA. I went to the ATM one time this whole trip, baby. That is true. He, before we went, he texted me I, as I was in my lift on the way to the hotel from the airport. He said, Do not let me play. Any locket link, which is Huff and Puff, Eureka, Piggy Bankin, Eureka Blast, even that farm game that I like, all corn, that, yeah, corn game, yeah. corn maze. I had this. I was I ran an experiment this weekend in Vegas. Everybody, no locket link, and I am up. I'm way, we're back. Where do we go? Tell them where we went. The first night. Well, it was after the punk rock night. Okay, so punk rock museum was first. Then we went to. Binions. Was that Binions? Yeah, dude. Well, we went to we went to the Italian place. Remember? Oh yeah, Esther's Kitchen. My, probably my favorite place in Vegas. I think really it's like, good. It's like my go-to. Really good. Uh, big fan. Went to Binions because Old Vegas is right there, guys. 
I'm I'm an MGM lifer, you know, Bellagio, uh, MGM Grand, Park MGM, Aria. I I usually stick to those, and to the point where I've laughed at a place called Binion's every time we pass it. Locked it. I've been mocking Binion's for years, and Binion. I'm I'm part of the Binion minionhood now. <laughs> I'm never going. Anywhere. I'm going. Min, I'm going Old Vegas only. What I saw, I've seen this man go through some things. What I saw happen was unbelievable. It was crazy. One of the Twitter responses in regards to this was, you know, how much money, how does it feel being up so much money knowing how much Colin lost, like directed to me, and simply not the case this time. I, I, I was infallible. Dude. It was like in Caddyshack when the priest is golfing. Yes. <laughs> or, 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 yeah, and that, yeah, yeah the good that. Lord would never interrupt yeah. the best game of my life. That's how it felt. I sat down at every machine, lost about a hundred dollars, and then won about 500. With the exception of the samurai machine, that was awesome. He sat down, put in his ticket that already had a few hundred on it, and hit six hundred dollars. It was awesome. The first spin, first spin, to, like a three dollar bet, too, which is that's rare. So, something was in the air at Binion's that night. Thank God, I'm down about 500 dollars. <clears throat> so yeah that and that's that's about how it went for the rest of the trip so i'm i'm up yeah and that's all we got for that's all we got for gambling. i'm way up yeah. everything's great on the way out of vegas on the way home we stopped yeah oh my whiskey god Pete's on the way home and we, the same thing happened. whiskey pete's for anybody who's driven from vegas to la there's like this like who the hell would stay here kind of place about yeah. an hour maybe yeah if that 45 minutes yeah where you go why is anybody stopping here it's right before <laughs> Because they got the dancing in Rio machine that cleaned your boy up. It was great. It was beautiful. And, uh, then, uh, and then the Avian Awards were, were Friday. That was the hardest hard lore has worked. <laughs> Truly. In, a, in, in a long ages. Time. And it was so worth it. It was awesome. You guys will see all about it, but we had a great time. Everybody was really cool. We met. We talked to such stars as Lily Lou, Adeline Starr, Alex Cole, uh, Connie Perignon. Vanna Bardot, Kenzie Taylor, Brittany Andrews, and much more. Uh, this was all this was all coordinated by our good buddy Kaya Eve. Unbelievable help. And our buddy Heaven, who just truly like we were so shy and yeah. shell shocked and scared at yeah. this thing that like if if they had not talked to these people for us, it never would have happened. So and it turned into probably the single like most fun thing we've ever made. It was awesome. So you guys will see about that. We won't talk. We won't spoil anything, but it was really cool. You're going to like it. And you know what? If you're a little bit of a prude, you're going to be fine. Yeah, because that's we it's were too. And let's spoil one thing. Okay. Obviously, we were there to find the identity behind hardlore.com. That was the mission. Which is a site not owned by us. It's a site that more in, more in line with what's happening at the AVN Awards. Frodo and Sam were on our way to Mordor. <laughs> and speaking of which... We asked every single one of them if they preferred extended or theatrical Lord of the Rings, and I shit you not, 90% of them had a detailed, nuanced answer to why they had a preference. Yeah, whether either way, yeah. they had a reason, and it was awesome. This thing's incredible. Anyway, anyway. Let's, let's now to the Q&A. Thank you all. Well, we should, talk, we should also talk about the Cosmic Joke Show. We should oh, catch dude. up to today. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Cosmic Joke record release was, was on Saturday. It was beautiful. Morrissey canceled the You Are the Quarry at the Forum. <laughs> so I was able to go. Um, special night. A special night. Every band was cool. Yeah. Um, the vibe was great. It was just like a celebratory thing. It, it was a really celebratory good. thing. It was you know in the same room that their music video was shot in. That their empty room music video was shot in was a was an oversold sold out. Show. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It was my first time there. I like that venue quite awesome. a bit. Record store was awesome. There was a food fest going on. That was crazy. So many friends. It was beautiful. Um, and then the next day was was Kale's memorial. Yes, which was brutal, brutal but beautiful. Beautiful, really a wonderful thing. And um, after that, we got uh, steak last night, and here we are. That was awful. <laughs> uh, don't go to the smokehouse in Burbank. You don't need to go there. The cheese bread's pretty good. Cheese bread was pretty Cut good. Cut the side of my lip, but, you know, whatever. It's fine. Anyway. Now. Now it's Q&A time, guys. Q &A time. Don't go to the smokehouse in Burbank. Go to the Sujita instead. Uh, okay. <laughs> First question. Uh, what's up, man? That's my question. Sanity. Love you, buddy. Not much. Just here doing an episode with Bo. Uh, how was the gambling in Vegas? The best ever. 
I'm infallible, young man. It was unbelievable. Uh, Terry Carroll asks, what is slash was it like being signed to Metal Blade? Two very different answers. Two here. very different answers. Why don't you go ahead since you're still signed there? Metal Blade um, opened up a lot of doors for us. Metal Blade gave us some opportunities, whether it be financial or tour-wise um, through association. Um, there are people, much much like in hardcore, who, like people can see a Triple B logo and be like, I don't know what that is. I should check it out. Mm-hmm. There are people who feel the same way about Metal Blade. Ooh. Right, so they'll see. We use the maybe guillot- not the pirate one. We use the guillotine logo, which is back, which is which is back because yeah. it's the best fucking one. I like the axe. He likes the axe. I'm a, I'm a hell of weights guy, yeah. and and there you go. <laughs> I'm a I'm a I'm a Goo Goo doll guy, <laughs> and they'll see that and want to check it out, and they'll see us opening for Cannibal Corpse and Hate Eternal, and go, oh, sick! I'm going to check yeah, that I out. I know them. Um, we, it's our second LP with them. They have definitely been i would say an important step for the band they got a lot of stuff on their plate and they got huge bands on their plate so of course there's going to be like areas where they're focusing and we need to kind of figure shit out on our own and that's where management comes in and that's where management comes in jimmy v the best in the biz gets it done every time lord knows he does so we've been we've been happy how do you feel uh uh you know we're, we're i don't have any bands on there anymore um, Twitching Tongues was signed to Metal Blade for disharmony and gaining purpose. Um, you know, both were both had their their struggles. Disharmony, like had you know had the big lineup change happen right before it came out, um, which they were really supportive of because yeah. the same thing happened to Cannibal Corpse at one point. Right, right. Um, you know, like what they moved they moved the whole band to Tampa. Chris Barnes quit. You know what it was just alex and the drummer yeah and they're 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 panicking to the same people we're panicking to interesting and you know and they're assuring them like guys no like this is this is the beginning right and in cannibal corpse case that really was the case like they what they've done since like in the corpse grinder era mm-hmm. is to me what defines cannibal corpse 100 percent. rutan <laughs> yeah that dude. motherfucker redefines cannibal corpse every time he picks up a guitar unbelievable goat goat one of the straight up dude um was um not to interrupt but when did gaining purpose come out 28 march 2018 so we were briefly on the same label yeah yeah right 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 at the end yeah and and i remember post human was done after gaining purpose Mm -hmm. and came out first and we were like fuck man huh right because i I don't i genuinely don't i think post human was 2017 and no, it was 2018. Oh, it was it was, but it was early 20. I think it was January, or February, yeah. and we were March. So I remember being, okay. I remember being like, "Fuck, they got us," um, which didn't. I mean, I don't think that was a huge, but like, Post Human was tremendously successful on its own merits by the by just the songs rocking and the record I rocking. Agree. I agree. Um, gaining purpose, not really the same. I think maybe we have the a tendency of choosing the wrong single every time. We mm-hmm. always choose the wrong first single. Mm-hmm. Like, In Love, There's No Law, first single was In Love, There's No Law. Which, in retrospect, pretty crazy move Should've to been not just make it as just. Disharmony, first single was Disharmony, which probably the one time we made the right move. But, yeah. we, but maybe the consensus is that we made the wrong record. Okay. Gaining Purpose, first single was Harakiri, which is like not a song we play. And the video was kind of... Video was ho- was like silly and hokey, but right. like I still love. Oh, I it's awesome, but on. depending on the message you're... Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know it was like a it was a, a like highly the first time we really dabbled in political lyrics at all, which I don't even know if I'm intelligent enough to do to this day, other than finish the job, which is just kill them all. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, and, and and to be real with you, disharmony. Uh, Paris in the last episode was talking about how Master Killer got twenty eight grand and how what that wasn't a lot in 1995. We didn't get half that. And then for the second one, we got even less. We got we had to take a reduction because disharmony underperformed. So that's my answer. <laughs> Worst injuries you've sustained while playing your own set. Uh, this is hardcore 2012 or 14. Oh, I think it was 14. I've talked about how I had an ingrown toenail the whole set and then <laughs> lasted the whole set. And Jeremy from Lifeless last song put his whole body weight onto that thing. And it was I think it was like the worst it's like 
searing single second of pain I've ever. Is felt. there a video of that? Pro- it's of, in like, there. of that moment. I don't. I've never found it. I don't want to care to relive it. <laughs> but it it's it was like it was like my world turned black and white for a second. I have. Um, I always have like a back or a knee thing. Um, like maybe once a tour. I've definitely cut like my knuckle and stuff open. Nothing too bad. Rolled an ankle, maybe. Uh, James and I collided once in Australia, and I think I was a little concussed. Mm. I think because I I felt nauseous afterwards for a little while. You know, um, there was a time in I found out a really so I'm allergic to a certain kind of anesthesia, the, whatever the most common one is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I react really strangely to certain opiates if I've ever had painkillers, pain pillars, or anything like that. One time. Chris had had his tonsils removed, or no, I'm sorry, his uh, wisdom teeth removed, mm. and he had, uh, I think, Vicodin left over. I threw my back out in New York so bad that I could barely walk, like truly terrible. And this was 2015. He gave me a half of a 2.5 milligram. Interesting. It kept me up all night. Really? I could not see. And isn't the whole point is you go to bed? Certain. My mom's the same way. So my mom could never do pain pills. The or Bowen, like the that. Bowen side. We don't, we don't fuck with that. <laughs> the Irish side. As the same thing with uh, that kratom shit. Oh. I took some for like inflammation. I thought, oh, it'll help my knees. It keeps me up, makes me pukey, makes me like kind of freak oh. out. So I can't do any of that stuff. That sucked. I'm, I'd be sleeping. <laughs> Anesthesia, I'm out. The sleep, I don't. The 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 day that I got my appendectomy. Yeah. I don't think I've slept right since. Oh, well, dude. I mean, I remember them being like countdown from 10 and you're like, t- and you're just gone. But that, that sleep I got is the only time in my whole life I, I think I've woken up refreshed. I woke up vomiting. Really? I was, I, I was dizzy from that anesthesia for about a week. Well, you know the video that I took after my appendectomy where I'm like, I don't have an appendix. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was like genuine joy. A high, a super high, genuine joy guy. High for the first time. <laughs> that was the porn convention. Uh, it was the best thing we've ever done. It was cool. It was the most, it was the, the warmest, most welcoming uh, community we've ever <laughs> been involved with. It was Honestly, insane. I mean, so if you think of going to like some kind of big metal fest. Yeah. We're talking essentially to the, the talent, right? Yeah. We're talking to fucking Glenn Benton. Yeah. Corpse Grinder. Yeah. And Randy Blythe. <laughs> now, now, those last two would be dope. I don't know Glenn at all. I've met the other two. Right. But, you know, at, at most of No, these, I mean, in terms of sheer scale. Sh- like, for in, sure. In terms but, of where you're going. So, what I mean is, at those things, it's going to be a little weird and be a little like, what? Like, what are you, why are you yeah. talking to me about Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Not the case. Not the case. They were so excited to just, like, be humans talking about whatever with us like we asked them what their favorite thing was and a lot of them they were like oh shit cats never thought about a lot of them it's like wrestling where they can stop being the undertaker and be normal you know except for one except for one who owned us (laughs) like we were like like, like, you're the smartest person i've ever talked to uh master killer of slayer albums great question it is rainbow it's it's genre defining era defining predates everything but does everything some would say master killer is the rain and blood of hardcore you know and not the not master Ki- rain and blood being the master killer of slayer albums yeah uh, absolutely and maybe you know and that's a stretch of course because master killer is defining things like now to for because we're a, a fully operating propaganda machine here every week saying <laughs> Master killer. Yeah, saying you need to listen to it. Um, that but was that was German accent, by the way. It's raining blood. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. How many ten year olds do you think you could take in a fight? This is funny because this was edited because I saw this earlier and it was nine year olds, but that okay. is different. You get no weapons; it's just you and your bare hands. Every time you knock down one down, two more spawn in their place. So I used to be a daycare counselor. Mm-hmm. I used to work at a daycare before and after school. Ten and though, summer school. So we had fifth graders. Okay, it was K through five. That's ten. I have done this math in my head. It's like, okay, I'm in the gym because the daycare was always in the gym. These little fuckers are running through the door. Yeah. What can I do? I think maybe 10. 10? Like, not, but like as they're coming, the first couple, they're done. Oh, yeah. And it's not until there's two or more where you're like, ah, get off. Yeah, I know. They have a lot of energy. 
And and I remember being ten and like being a little fucker and thinking like I could probably take that old man. But if you get clocked in the nose as a ten year old, you're done. You're done. You're done. You're, you're, you're crying. You're, you're in crying. Tears. And they are they could hit you. Yeah, but they're not going like, to hurt you. Like, ah. Yeah, you'd be like ah. Ten so, is uh, just ten's not that many. I know it's not, dude. Because okay. I'm telling you, I was a big ten year old. Yeah. I was, I, you know what? I don't, I don't know, a hundred pounds or something. Yeah, yeah. Like I was not, I, I, I did all my growing by high school. So mm. I was basically this size by high school. I was a bigger kid. You had no weapons, just your bare hands. Every time you want, uh, I think I could do, you could pick one up. And I think just, I could do 200. All right. This next week, on our <laughs> Lord, Colin kills 210, uh, 10 year olds. This is de- <laughs> this is definitely a thing where diminish it's the opposite of diminishing returns. So someone like Brody would do way more yeah. than you yeah. who would I believe you would do more than me. I genuinely believe that we get we get tired and they don't. That's exactly. the fact. They they'll just swarm you. I think I could do 10 12 maybe. I think yeah. you would get to around 20 genuinely. 200. 20 times 10. Agreed. Next question. Agreed to, agree to agree. What are your go-to Chinese food food orders? Depends on where I'm going. I'm a big. Is it, um, yeah, is it white people Chinese? Because if so, then it's orange. half chow mein, half white rice, uh, triple orange chicken. Um, if it's if it's the real deal, uh, I'm a big steamed dumpling guy. Love a dumpling. I love sure. a steamed dumpling, not a fried dumpling. I'm not a fried dumpling guy. I'm like a bee. Soft. I like them soft and steamy. Um, I like any kind of like orange chicken type thing <laughs> but like but not just orange but like the like orange peel or like, yeah, yeah. like the queen chicken or whatever the whatever that kind of acidic fried chicken dish would be i like a beef and brock i like uh szechuan love i love like a dry chinese food spicy my mouth just started watering yeah, yeah. But that's good stuff love a lo mein like a chicken lo mein or something mm-hmm. you know probably the whitest answer it's fine but hey it's good we are where we are and they make good shit favorite meal in vegas ever is a place called delmonico's um best experience was beauty in essex thanks to friend of everything chris santos right um he just had us at his restaurant had the band in his restaurant and it was just like an amazing experience he I, i recently went and like paid for a meal you know it felt great at delmonico's oh good just felt like yeah what about this time around? Uh, this I, time around, I loved the buffet, dude. The buffet was really We went good. to the buffet at Caesars because the one at the Wynn was closed. And, dude, our waitress, server? She was, a, she was incredible. She was so sweet. Um, yeah, the, tell, tell the story about the, the, the brisket the guy. Oh, the yeah. Uh, the, the guy cutting the lamb was like a guy who used to tour with Madball or something. And he saw my breakdown shirt, and he was like, "What?" He said, "What brand is that?" And I said, "It's Breakdown, New York Hardcore." And he's like, "Yeah, he's destroyed Madball." I was like, well, "Okay, you're getting six rack of lamb." <laughs> yeah, and he gave me six <laughs> rack of lamb, and the lamb was the best part. It there, was easily. the lamb and the pork. Yeah, the cubed pork. And then I walked up to the creme brulee guy. They're still torching him, and he hands everybody one around me. Hands Matt one. Hands the lady that comes up to me in front of me. I get there. He hands me five of them. How can that be? How he just you- puts five on the plate. Matt and uh, James both saw it happen. And he and when I walked away. He went, "You want more?" <laughs> no. It was like well, maybe because they were closing. Oh, I see. So they're they're getting rid of the. They just get rid of them, yeah. and he knew he he knew he found his guy. Yeah. Love a creme brulee. I had nine different desserts. They were all you good really minus did. one, but I had nine. Creme brulee was fantastic. It was all of them. The cone, and you had the cone too. The cone the was good, the espresso cone. cone. So the I we we love the Caesar's buffet, very good. Would Bo ever want to do vocals in a band? Let me answer this, Bo. He does. It's called Wolf Note. <laughs> but uh, like a, a heavy band, <laughs> I I probably would or could. Yeah, um, I think you would sound great. Yeah, I think I think I, I would and could, but I'm just not. Um, I've been in a creative slump for thirty. <laughs> 33 years and your back's in shambles and my back is in shambles but so first so first person sings along and hangs on your back. Yeah. yeah i think you could and should but yeah look at listen to wolf note i get a Check it out. i get an email that says like wolf notes september and rewind and it's like three listens yeah. <laughs> or you get the uh the band camp sales that's what i'm saying lifetime yeah. sales yeah. and it'll be like lifetime sales 346 bucks month sales zero <laughs> i get about six of them a month um we were not on the Viva La Vinyl message board, right? 
Nope. Never heard of that in my life. I was into vinyl really early on, sold a bunch of shit, and then kind of got back into it within the last few years. Uh, we did not look up Olive's work after AVN. We 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 knew her before. Okay, we we know her personally. Rank post black metal. Uh, ooh, black, black album Metallica records. It's uh, actually I'll go reload load. Reload load. Yeah. Uh, hardwired. You over death magnetic. Death magnetic seasoned and then hardwired the song. Uh, what is it called? Soldier, so pick the high moth, road. Moth to a flame. That song is that's the best. I'm about to the flame. I think that's single best post black album song. Really? Yeah. Better than the the like radio hits of Load and Reload. Hundred fucking percent. Well, because it's like a metal song. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. an actual. It's a metallic song. It has the. Yeah, it has. As a pre-chorus. Yeah. That's. They did all the that chorus that hook is incredible. Da, 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 da. But then they you know the song is nine minutes long and they yeah. just do it whole the whole do thing twice. But I think the parts in there fantastic. I would go hardwired, load reload, death magnetic. You know what? I might go hardwired, death magnetic, load reload. Wow. I don't think any of them are fully good. No, none of them are fully good. But I I do think reload is better than load. Strange. You know what? I might go stanger. Hardwired, Death Magnetic, <laughs> Load Reload. Have you ever gotten through Stanger? <laughs> in one listen, never. It, it's in in thirty listens, never. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's um, one of the most difficult things. It's so cool. I'm so glad it exists. Stanger's like this thing's driving me crazy. Yeah. And then and then you put it on with the boys, and Fran- you realize Frantic's the best song ever. Does it make you appreciate? Like does does yeah, frantic or fucking sane anger or amber. Sweet, sweet amber. Sweet, and how sweet are you? you? Does that make sweet you? Sweet does it get? Appreciate battery more. You know what I mean? Like, is, does it work that way? Well, it's just you put battery on. You go. How is this the same guy? Shit. Anyway, <laughs> Sanger number one. Uh, any chance for an episode soon where y'all break down the logistics of touring? How would that, what would we've, you, we've definitely did that. Yeah, what it, would you want? That, that was one of our earlier episodes where we did the our guide to touring. Yeah. Um, so it's out there. Um, do you mean, they might mean logistics with like booking and stuff, which there are many tiers that's, of that. That's a whole other. There's where a new band with a demo, well, you got to have friends the next city over. That's how it starts. Or know someone who knows someone, you know. Yeah. And then it goes all the way up or, to. Or logistics as in getting show to show. Getting show to show is, and. Where to sleep. Where to sleep. We, That's I, We've done that. It's yeah. out there. I mean, we're working on something. We could do a 2.0 someday. We're working on something down the line that, that will help with that. What's your drumming warm-up and practice routine? I do not warm up. <laughs> you really not? Don't warm not up. Not at all? No, I'll do. I'll stretch my calves, calves a little bit, yeah. and then I'll just do the, like, but I don't do the, like, hour on the pad before or wow. anything. Maybe, I, maybe if I did, I'd be better, but we play five times a year, so who cares? <laughs> Uh, practice is more it's more rehearsal like if we have something coming up we'll play two or three times Mm -hmm. and then we'll play but it's i don't practice nearly enough i barely consider myself a drummer at this point uh play when i need to you know much like batman yeah uh when are you guys trying to foot long cookie at subway okay listen obviously i hate subway but their cookies go so i would try it yeah you're right i would too Top five choruses all time. This is big. We should have. This is a whole episode. Yeah, we should have prepped for this. Okay, but off the top of your head, it's good. Toto Africa. That yeah, was the first one I thought. Yeah, of. the prom- a- the promise one in Rome. Sorry that I'm just thinking of the right words to say. I know they don't sound the way I planned them to be. And if I had to walk the world, I'd make you fall for me. I promise. I promise you, I will. That's the one. Um. Keep going. You got two. Got two. I got two bangers. Uh, fuck. Okay. Uh, you will edit you and make you so. No, I'm not gonna. So I'm not gonna cut this. Watch this. You'll. You, there will be no cuts. I'm gonna say <laughs> Michael Jackson Earth song. It's just melody. There's no words. And he just goes ah, ah, ah crazy key change, and then it goes ah, ah. <laughs> I think that's one of the greatest choruses ever. <laughs> Um. Oh, fuck, man. 
Oruses. Three. Lady Gaga, uh, Venus. Oh. When you touch me, I die just a little inside. I wonder if this could be love. This could be love. Cause you're out of this world. Galaxy, space, time. I wonder if this could be love. This could be love. All right, that's enough. Uh, number four. Number five. These are all subject to change. These are all going to change. Um, um, what's like a great metal, melodic metal chorus? Oh. You know? Yeah. I, the master killer, <laughs> strike you down. That's a good one. What are some of yours? Want to dance with somebody, Whitney Houston? Oh fuck! In your eyes, Peter Gabriel. Mm -hmm. uh, higher love, Steve Winwood. Bring me a diet, diet Coke, Coke by Steve Whoa. Winwood. <laughs> uh, um, let's see, I uh, going away to college by Blink One Eighty Two. It's on Enema. I just mm -hmm. think it's a really nice chorus mm -hmm. for that kind of music. It's like as good as it's gonna gotcha. get, you know. And then, dude, for metal. Rainbow in the Dark. Brother. He had something, huh? Dude, Dio is unbelievable. Yeah, imagine replacing the best guy ever and doing, With a, and doing a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, you're the, you're, that means you're the best guy ever. I went to a casino in, in Milwaukee the other night and walked into a room where there was a cover band. Walked in during an Iron Maiden cover. The time. Da, da, da. So the minute I sat down in the machine and started playing, they started playing Holy Diver. Big pop in the room too, which oh, wow. was cool. And I, I hit two hundred bucks. Dude, that just reminded me. Yeah, when I sat down at the Mega Bucks machine, and you give love a bad name, started playing. Oh yeah, that's right. That's a fucking hook. We we listen. We listen to exclusively Chromags, Bon Jovi, and Wesley and Willis. Wesley Willis for the last. Oh, there's one. Four days. There's a great chorus. The chicken cow. <laughs> the chicken <laughs> cow. <laughs> That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Suck a caribou's ass is a great one. Or the vultures, the vultures, the vultures, the vultures, the vultures, the vultures ate my dead ass up. That's a good one. All right. Favorite music and or hardcore documentary. It's some kind of monster. Oh, wow. Uh, for for non-hardcore, some kind of monster. Yeah. For hardcore, I, I think the America's Hardcore documentary has nuggets that are really cool. For the most part, it kind of sucks. Uh, another state of mind is like, half fake mm -hmm. and half real but with the commentary on with the stein brothers from youth brigade it's amazing and ian mcfarland's the godfathers of hardcore oh unbelievable and and until of course the hard lore chronicles yeah come yeah, out. yeah yeah until the hard lore chronicles don't you worry about the new york hard lore chronicles which i can't call because i don't i want drew stone to like us um it'll just i think it'll just be called new york hard lore you yeah. Know? yeah yeah new york hard lore chapter three stigma in manhattan just wait, man. Just you wait. Um, top. Oh, if oh. you had to choose an exist existing song as your wrestling walkout music, what would it be? An existing song? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> the master. <laughs> uh, Let's check it to get I mean, there. honestly, time ends is a great. Time ends is a, is at a great the, Yeah, you walk yeah. out then. You know, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an amazing song. Death camps. <laughs> Age of Quarrel would be a good one a too. Just come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty uh, good. That would be good. Or any, literally any Hatebreed song. Name one. Yeah. It's a perfect wrestling entrance. Yeah. Proven would be good. Perseverance would be good. I Will Be Heard is like built for that. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, just, yeah. The pop immediately would yeah, be maybe. insane. Oh, man. Um, kind of got I know. a little chills. Good. Uh, Wolverine Blues would be really good. Oh. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Gannick, Gannick. Yeah. Um, Candle Mass uh, intro into Well of Souls would be crazy. The if you're like a spooky goth ass beater, yeah, that's for you. And that might be me. <laughs> uh, top five metalcore slash adjacent records from from uh oh, from, from your, your friends, friends belmora wow hey boys hey belmora cave in till your heart stops 
cave in beyond hypothermia. The cave in <laughs> Jupiter. I would say at the gates. Um, that's, that's mellow death, dude. You think so? You yeah. wouldn't call that metalcore? No, it's mellow death. I think melodic uh, death metal. That's that's the age of quarrel of melodic death metal. The master killer of the master killer of melodic death. Metal. So what is metalcore? Define it for me then. I just think you know it when you hear it, and I know it when I hear Caven until, until your heart stops that it's the best one. Okay. I think it's the blueprint of what Metalcore can and should be. You Dead. know, obviously, early 18 Visions, early Poison the Well. Dead to Fall, everything I touch turns to go. pieces. There you go. Or falls to pieces. Um, there you go. I would say Converge Petitioning. Wow. Up there. Way See, up but there. like that wouldn't strike as Metalcore to me. I would, not, I would never would you call think it? that. Just Converge. Yeah, Truly, yeah, no, honestly, they're, just they're, so they're in a league of his own, of their own. Yeah, every cave-in record and every converge record. Those are my, those are the big ones. Because like, it is is there not an argument to say that Master Killer is a metal, metal horror like record? metallic hardcore? And, and that, that's the thing is I I don't I know that metalcore is like was that right? But it's obviously become something. There's also its own yeah thing. Swag metal is its own thing <laughs> yeah, now. You know, yeah. like scrams. Volume, yeah, yeah, volumes. And if you have a scram, you're swag metal. You know, spear box. You're that's swag. Swagged metal. out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the Cave in Discog is my <laughs> favorite metalcore slash adjacent record. Uh, we are LDB Dive Public Service Announcement. We kind of did that before. Do it good. Uh, but we did, we did get good news. I, can we talk about it? I don't think so. About the Diving's going to be great this it's year. Be much that's better all you need year. to know. Uh, what's the story behind Disharmony Zero? The tracks sound awesome. I've always wanted to know some background behind why, behind why you did them. So the music is the demos. Those are the Disharmony demos. That's what we did. That's pre-production. You're, here, you're listening to pre-production. I did vocals over them later and lied and said I did them earlier. But they were later. The vocals were way later. It was, but it was single take and just doing what I, just ripping through them. Uh, and we just loved the, the pre-production production and wanted to hear them finished. So maybe we'll finish the whole thing at some Interesting. point. Maybe we'll redo the whole thing. I didn't know point. that. Yeah. Question for Bo. I'm planning on going to Chicago this summer. What are the most, mu- what are the must places to go in Chicago? Must go. My God. I told you I can't read. You can't must read. go places in Chicago food or things to do. Okay. Summertime is perfect because Chicago is a beautiful city. Right now, it's the worst. Mm. We're in the the fucking death. Yeah. The valley. Yeah. The, dol- the doldrums. Okay. That's it. That's, that was the word I was looking for. Yeah. We're not in Death Valley. Um, the valley. <laughs> it's good. Here's what you do. Go on Groupon and find yourself the architectural boat tour. There's a river system through the city. It starts at Lake Michigan. It goes way up north, way down south. Get there. Get on the boat tour. It's like 30 bucks a person. Pizza, you want to go to Pequod's or Lou Malnati's. If you want thin style, you want Tortoricis or Pat's. For a beef, you want Portillo's or Johnny's. Come on. I, I'm a Portillo's man. But um, there is excellent ramen on board, both like lo- in Logan Square on Wicker Park, in Chinatown. Incredible ramen. Incredible what if they're looking sushi. for like a Michelin star experience? Um, well, there's Momotoro, there's Kasama, just got a Michelin star, it's in my neighborhood. It was featured in the Bear briefly. Congrats, Kasama. It's a, uh, a Philippine kind of breakfast spot, I believe. With a Michelin star? With a Michelin star. That's fucking awesome. Crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, you're gonna wanna stay, so the thing is, if you're not staying downtown, you're gonna stay by the airport. Don't stay by the airport, because you're mm-hmm. way out there. Yeah, stay- is in the boonies. I've it, done yeah. it, and it ain't good. Don't do it. Stay downtown, spend the money. Except that Portillo's near the airport is that one damn was, good. That was pretty good. Uh, enjoy the beach. Enjoy the lakefront. The S- Skokie has a botanical garden that is literally one of the most beautiful places ever. It's free. So you said beach. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> remember the famous question asked by one uh, fill-in member of beloved touring band. Does Illinois have ocean? <laughs> <laughs> Illinois does not have ocean. Okay. Illinois has lake that you can't see across. An incredible lake, it's a, right? You, one, some might say great lake. Okay. Um, but there's so much to do in Chicago. There's does all- Illinois have ocean is one of the funniest things a person has ever said. We have, it's something like 20 miles of beachfront. The whole city is lined by the beach. So, I mean, there's shopping, there's shows, there's comedy, there's whatever you're into, we got. It's pretty good. Um, how many bands are you guys trying to add to Hardlow Records this year? 
I don't think there's a number, but you know, we, f- we feel it when we see it. It's really cool to be like, I want to be involved in this. Yes. And it's, not feel like we have to fill some quota. It's or, an amazing feeling. Yeah. Um, we felt it the other day and we can't wait to tell you more. Yeah. Very true. Um, my, my back still reeling. Just like, like something about a young straight edge band that, that like rocks and, and gets it. And gets it makes me feel like a teenager, mm-hmm. and maybe that's coming next. We'll see. Could we get music composed by Colin and Bo? Maybe have features from previous like uh, like a hard like a Mark Ronson type of thing. Like we're Mark Ronson. Like we like there's a hard lore album. Oh, they're suggesting a hard lore album where we make the music and other people sing. Interesting. That's a good idea. Leak that. <laughs> Um, the album release party for Cosmic Joke looked awesome. How are y'all approaching finding artists to work with in the future? I I don't think there is an approach, and I think that's the beauty of it. The only, really, the only thing is kind of like regional. Mm. We're gonna, we want to kind of fill gaps, sure, and we want to put over bands that like we give a shit about yeah. and that think could use use it. Yeah, hundred percent. We want it to be beneficial all across the board. Hundred percent. Top five favorite UK hardcore bands of all time. Isn't that in the? gotta be it's chisel 100 arms race <laughs> street soldier uh chubby in the gang chubby in the gang uh high viz high viz knuckle dust perfect uh question for colin what happened with you trying to be a wrestler only for brody to end up being a wrestler this is a cool story honestly I, it is a cool story I like um it. so my ex-girlfriend carlin bathe shout out to her uh currently in arena and out of arena a broadcaster for the NHL. Worked used to work for the LA Kings. She was the in arena announcer for the LA Kings. Her buddy Augie was formerly like a job guy, uh, like a like a a WWE job guy. Like worked all the time. Oh really? Dark w- oh, I got you. Got you. Did the job? Yeah. Did the job means lost. <laughs> um, he, she told him I liked wrestling, and he was like, you know, uh, if you ever want to give it a shot, let me know. And I was like, I want to give it a shot. Let's go. How old were you? Uh, this was 2014, so I was 21, 22. Which is pretty prime good. time. Yeah, it's prime time. It's prime time. But I had never lifted weights. I had never ran a mile. <laughs> I had never done anything athletic in my life to the point where I, upon giving it a shot that one, I only went in a ring twice, gave it a shot twice that first time. And well, first of all, you're supposed to not go in a ring for months. Yeah, you right. Know? You're supposed, you're to, supposed to do the work and, oh. and learn all the basics outside of it. Um, so we did it wrong. He fast-tracked me, and it, and it spooked me. Um, and it made me think, like, damn, I'm not an athlete. I have no business doing this. Uh, Brody King, obviously my best friend of a long time, much longer than that, was like, damn, I'm jealous that you got to do that. I want to give it a shot. So where I got like a private instruction at that school, he did the real thing and just signed up for the school. And he's fucking massive. Santino Brothers Academy in Bell Gardens, California. Check it out. Um, I was a little shrimp and he was a big guy who was born for it. And like there really is a thing. If you're cut out for it, they know right away. Really? Yes. And they're going to they're going to kick your ass a little bit to be like, this guy's the real deal. We need to make sure. Um, and he was the standout everywhere he went. And he went to the Harley Race Camp. He was the standout there. Everybody, they joked and called him standout. Uh, and he stayed in the program for years. And like they held on to him and made sure he rocked before debuting. He debuted in a battle royale that was like Halloween themed. So he was Hillbilly Jim in a, in a Halloween battle royale as his debut. And I was there. It was awesome. And then his second match was squashing some guy, which yeah. was incredible. He came out the God's Hate. Yeah. Hit his finish. Killed him. It was amazing. Um, was he Brody King right away? He was Brody King right away. Had merch at the first gig, which they were all like, what are you doing, man? Why do you have shirts? Because he comes from hardcore. He comes Park. from hardcore. He knows. He's like, I know how to market myself. Yeah. And that's. And boy, does he. Look at that. Look how that went. <clears throat> uh, you can only eat food originating from one country for the life. What country do you pick? Japan with a bullet. Is that true? 100%. Not really? Even, no hesitation. More more than Mexico I could, or I could alternate ramen, sukeman, sushi, uh, you know, wa- b- wagyu beef. 
You ever heard of a little place called fucking Italia? Yeah. That's where I'm going. Pizza pasta? Pizza pasta, fish. I'm a dead man. No, bronzino? I'm fish. Dead. There's all seafood. There's squid and octopus. There's fresh stuff. There's olive. Yeah, they got all that in they Japan. They got bread. They got all that in Japan. Going to town. They got better noodles in Japan. Going home. I, I, home? <laughs> yeah, half home. Quarter. I ain't picking Ireland, I'll tell you. Quarter. Yeah, that's for. I guess potatoes. I'm not. I don't, I don't like. I don't, I don't. Have you ever seen that bit, the Jim Gaffigan bit? No. About the potato famine, where he's like, they, the, the whole thing was about a potato famine, but they had corn. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't. I don't like corn. It's very good. Uh, Italy. Japan, <clears throat> Japan, no question. I could I could alternate a, two Japanese meals a day, seven days a week, no problem. I don't believe you. We're going after this. We already knew. Well, this, it's already been established. That is where we're eating tonight. I'm very excited. <laughs> Uh, what's the scoring criteria for a good stage dive? I don't know if the, there's so much of a score, but but it is a fail pass. Yeah, it's like that sucked, or damn, that was awesome. You need to be in the air. Gotta get in it. Gotta get Just air, jump, man. And it's jump like, and roll. If you're there's scared. a confidence you can see in yeah. it. If somebody's like, ah, yeah, it's yeah. like no, that wasn't good. But if you're just give it your all and send it, it's a ten. That's really all it is. Should not rather not be able to shower. An entire tour, or only be allowed, only be allowed to eat Subway. Wow. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, two weeks. Because a month, you're not going a month. I love showering. I love showering too. I, on tour, I kind of do it twice a day. Yeah, I'm. St- I guess the I stank. stank. I get the stank. I, I'm. I'm a stinky wake up guy. Me too. I wake I up pit. stank. So I, I got. I get pit. That's get very pit. harm's way. Yeah. I got foot. I got the, foot. Everybody, if, if, if harm's way's way of saying that they developed the athlete's foot in Australia was I got foot, brother. <laughs> and brother, we got we, we got foot from the same <laughs> guy. Thanks, I exist. Um, I, I I think I would choose Subway. Honestly, I love to shower. So for a two week tour, now I can I can lalabo, I can deodorize. You know what? I can wet wipe. You know what? I can use the manscape crop mop, and then I could eat anything I want. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped. <laughs> wow. The best male grooming products in the world, and they've been the, our longest running sponsor for almost two years. Oh, now. yeah. Well over a year now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, amazing. I have Manscaped stuff with me. I use it every single day. Um, Look at my work here with the handyman. Unbelievable. Can you unbe- believe that? I, I, I literally <laughs> can't believe that. Uh, we love Manscaped. If yeah. you use code HARDLER on manscaped.com, you get 20% off and free money. Free shipping, shipping, man. That's all you need to get anything. So just do it. Um, just do it. I, I just re-upped on the body wash. You got all your new got stuff Got all here. my new oh. stuff, dude. The crop mop wipes are truly in- incredible. Are they? Now, let me ask you. Are they for your man or are they for? They're for your scape. Oh, oh yeah. Down there. Holy and God. they're for a lot. It's like, it says on there, it says like balls and butt. Beautiful. Like right on there. So you can do a, you can go balls to butt. I love <laughs> One that. wipe. I love that. Front to back. And that's what they're made for. I will say there's only 12 in the pack. So okay. maybe get two packs if you're going to get it. Okay. Um, One more 5.0, dude. Dude, I can't wait. Mine's waiting for me at home. Oh my God. It's, it's, it tomorrow. it's USB-C charging now. It doesn't have the, Hello. the wireless thing. Okay. Which I greatly prefer. Because every it's universal. It is universal. Everybody's got it. Um, uh, man. And it's been a game. Uh, the new stuff has been a game changer for me. They have supported us for a long time. And you can support us by going to manscaped.com and using code HARDLORE. 20%. Free shipping. Athletic Greens. AG1. Proud. Proud to, to support AG1 here on, on HARDLORE. Um, and they support us. They support our gut health. They, they they supply us with the vitamins, probiotics, and antioxidants we need. I drank this. I look forward to it. It's the best part of my day. It's something I, it's, it's just part of my daily routine, yeah. it, much like showering and everything else. And, and as it should be. And I just got testimonials from, from uh, one of the people at the AVN Awards. We don't want to spoil it. We don't want to spoil it because it's an amazing moment. Yeah. Um, James Buzma, who we just hung out with in Vegas, told us that he's on AG1 Dude, because of us and that it cleared up his gut. That is so true. I forgot about that. He told us that at dinner. I love AG1. I love drinking AG1 whenever I can. I regrettably didn't bring any with me on this trip. I got, I got travel packs. Packed in a hurry. travel packs up the gills for you. <laughs> uh, but truthfully, uh, my, my digestive system has never been as good as it is since drinking AG1. And that's really 
all you should need to hear to give this a shot. So go to athleticgreens.com slash hardlore, and you're going to get five free travel packs. Mm-hmm. LDB is coming, is right around the corner. Oh. Jag, right around the corner. Tied oh. down right after that corner. Sound and Fury is coming. Outbreak. Outbreak is coming. Don't cause an outbreak with your with your with your bowels, <laughs> with your nasty <laughs> digestive tract. Drink AG1, get it cleared up. Mm-hmm. Back to the episode. <laughs> that was our best. There was no cut there. There's no cut. That was What record shops do you currently love and which ones do you miss? Um we were big Tower Records kids, man. We saw where where we were yesterday had a bunch of signs. Relics of was it all Valley stuff? Mhm. Relics of Valley, um, advertising and branding, huge Tower Records neon sign in in orange or kale, beautiful. Um, that going to Tower Records before going to the movies, yeah, is I can't think of a better like day that eighth grade me had. Yeah, my mom and I would go to Tower one weekend, and then the fall the, that we would alternate between Tower and then Barnes and Noble. We go. You like get a book one week, or and then get a book every two weeks, and then a record every two weeks, kind Beautiful. of thing. Amazing. Here's the thing, man. I bet you, whatever city you live in, if it's a major city in any way, has some record store owned by a hardcore punk guy, dude. And they've got a bunch. We got Midnight Hour. We got Going Underground. We got Headline. So if you're local, to, if you're coming to LA, start at Midnight Hour because it's just the singer of ACX DC running the joint. Going underground, same thing. Punk records, all the the best stuff. Headline records, been there since the eighties or something. God, they got bootleg pins you wouldn't believe. Check them out. You got what? Reckless. Reckless is kind of the the bigger one, which is definitely there are uh, hardcore adjacent people involved, but mm-hmm. it's it's a little more probably amoeba esque. I would uh, say. Um, Bucket of Blood is like actual like the double cross seven oh, inch cool is name. in there. Ah. Uh-huh. Um, and then there's a newer one called Signal Records in in worker park that is outstanding they got cool bootleg shirts i got a nice entombed one there <laughs> they got all kinds of good stuff so. very nice bucket of blood though that's Buck- that sounds badass yeah it's awesome dude they got sci-fi and like books and horrors like it's like Sold. it's a whole thing so you see twitching tongues doing a carnivore cover someday isn't that funny smd is recorded it's on the it's on the in love deluxe reissue that just came out last year and uh not carnivore but as is gravity as is gravity we also opened our very first show ever with the breakdown from inner conflict so yeah i've thought about it we did it a long time ago (laughs) both thoughts on paper straws oh i hate paper straws i really think they're fucked up and bullshit and total trash you have the was it bamboo straws bamboo straws if an alternative look i get the plastic straw thing i don't I looked into it. But I, just think about a, how much less waste that is creating than like Nestle is by themselves or something. Yeah, of course. So the straw thing, whatever. I think we all long for the days of, of yore. But <sighs> when there's these alternatives, the biodegradable fake plastic ones, come on, just have that. Just or, do that. Hey, somebody make a really good telescoping straw. But dude, here's the problem with those. My cleaning keys. them is impossible. Yeah, you got to have the You thing. can't do it. It like, and we have the thing, but like you get your collection of straws dirty, and then the idea of like doing the thing to all of them is like, okay, I got to make two hours free now to do this. Yeah, so it sucks. So just give me the bamboo or the sugar cane yeah, just, or whatever the hell just, it is. Come on. come on, there's other other people can eliminate their own waste so that straws can exist. I, I'm not. I'm not even trying to be dramatic, but in my mind, I take note when a place has a paper straw, I won't go back. I won't go back if I can avoid it. Hundred percent. There's no point. It's especially, dude. You ever had a milkshake with a paper straw? I'll kill myself. It's impossible. It's awful. Uh, has Harm's Way ever recorded any covers? No, I don't think we have. I don't think we have. Interesting. We've done plenty live, but no, I don't believe we've ever recorded a cover for some reason. Give it a whirl. Strange. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's not up to me. That's true. I'm one piece. <laughs> One piece of yeah. that puzzle. This is an interesting question. I don't know that I have an answer. First band you regret loving. Not canceled, not guilty pleasure, but band you repped so hard and now can't stand. Can't stand. I'm thinking. There's pro um, I, I don't know that I don't know that I have that. I really the, the, I don't have guilty pleasures. 
I think Waking the Fallen is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm I'm not out here, you know, jamming the new stuff, but I don't think I have a band I regret loving. No. Um I'm I'm really thinking like I like some street punk stuff at one point that was like a little silly, but I don't regret it yeah. in any way. I, I don't would think, never I don't think we have checkered musical pasts, really. No, not really. I liked Yeah, no, I don't think so. Blink 182 and Sum 41 were like Oh, Kid Rock. I loved Kid Rock. I loved well, dude, Devil he Without was, a Cause. He he was a, a rocker. He was hard. Like the hip hop thing was a thing, but also he came he was like a new metal guy. He used sad but I true. Know, it was awesome. So it was like Slipknot, Corn, Kid Rock were like one type of music. And yeah, he fucking sucks. And yeah. now he sucks. So That's a good answer. I would say great that, yeah. answer. Yeah. What's your favorite Dying Fetus album? And Bo, what kind of picks do you use? <laughs> That's funny. Um, I would say the best one is Reign Supreme. My favorite is Destroy the Opposition because that's that was like... That's what got you. That's what got me. Really into like death metal, kind of, as a kid. Um, we've just talked... is a poignant thing. I bet that's because of... Yeah, it's probably because of that Twitter yeah. thing going around. I used... For a long time, I used the Dunlop Max Grip ones because mm -hmm. I like the grip. And then one day... I just tried the yellow Dunlop 0.73s and they just, I seem to not drop them as much live. My hands get a little sweaty. Me know. too. I like the green. He's a green man. Well, the 0.88 millimeter Dunlop. Um, if you choose the final pit for the rest of your life, what pit would it be? Mm, maybe. Apocalypse, no. Really? It's got everything. I might say Doomsayer, dude. No, that's Behold no, the Justice. Yeah, dude, the 808 on that is cool. It feels good. Easy. Yeah, I could have, have that on repeat and run a marathon. Twitch O negative typo tongues for Halloween this year. Nope. I, pretty good, I, It is good, but I am I am Glenn Danzig. Um, top five kick sounds on albums EPs. Kick. Boy, that's, that's going to be more U-coded. I could do snare. I don't know if I could do kick. I'll tell you some fun ones. Pantera, Far Beyond Driven. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like, yeah, it's just sounds it's slappy. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, Demi Borgir, Puritanical, uh, Puritanical, whatever it's called, Euphoric Misanthropia or whatever. Um, Kick sounds. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, No More Tears. Oh. Only Living Witness, Pro Mortal Form. Yeah. I'll, I'll, and let me spin one at please, you. Please, please. Different gear, but rumors. Sound City? Uh, it wasn't Sound City, but... The, the uh, drum yeah. on... Like, think about dreams. It's, it's just perfect. But you're not really... It is perfect, but you're not... That's not like a kick-oriented thing. Whereas, like... Cranberries, no need to argue or something is fucking. Yeah, that's drums. You know, you hot? know who had another fucking great kick is Cure. Cure had a good one. Yeah, yeah. How about Hot for Teacher? Van Halen, nineteen eighty four, is the is the final answer for <laughs> best kick sound ever. Good, good, good job. Top five video games. Damn. Uh, Metal, Gear, Metal Gear Solid three, Super Mario sixty four, Persona five, Bloodborne, The Witcher three. Damn, that was easy. Really good answers. Uh, World of Warcraft. This is a no answer. Uh, Diablo 2 LOD expansion. Damn. Um, the, homie, the homie Ball, dude. <laughs> couldn't believe Ball. <laughs> the homie Ball? Um, Ocarina of Time. Um, boy, that's tough. <laughs> um, dude. I'm not a shooter guy. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Mm. Back in the day. Yeah. Oh, hit, hitting the lobby. Lo that, I just had a great experience with that. And then um, probably play the Spire. I'll say check out Astroneer. If you've never played Astroneer, it's been on my mind a lot lately. Interesting. I think that's what makes a game good is when you just like, I got to play that again. I, I feel the same about movies now. Yeah. It's like the, I think me wanting to rewatch it should be considered into how good I think Dude, it is. Dude, 100%. I love Killers of the Flower Moon. 
I in I actively thought it's going to be a long time before I can watch that again. I loved Oppenheimer. I was ready to hit play wow. the second it ended. Wow. And maybe that's the subject material, and maybe that's the idea is you got to face the reality of what you've just seen. I think I could watch No Country for Old Men weekly. I feel the same for, about uh, Hateful for, Eight. Forever. I feel, yeah, I feel Hateful the same Eight. about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. So these, and these are our, yeah. I would say our shared favorite movie. Yeah. I forgot one. Fortnite. Will we ever see a Bo signature guitar with Ibanez? Dude, um, I've asked. It's highly unlikely just because of like how that shit works. Mm. There are like a few thousand people who know who I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got to, Ibanez has got to move some units, but if there, I'm, I don't I think, believe I'm currently. I think currently, it's possible now, you know? Maybe, and I don't. I don't think. Uh, I think. I don't know where we are with Ibanez right now, just because of of, oh. of years and stuff. Because I just haven't thought or talked about it in a minute. But hey, I'm open. I know a guy. However, I know a couple guys. There is something I just got text about it right before we started that is guitar related, just not a direct guitar that I'm going to be so excited about announcing very soon. That's we got I the prototype. I don't even know what it is, and I'm excited. Prototype about running. Oh, okay. Uh, I know what it is. <laughs> um, any chance? Oh, that's an interesting follow-up. Any chance you'll join the Dunnable Army? I uh, mean, you're open for business. He's open I'm for open business. For business. I, he's yeah. open for business. I, I don't. I truly. He don't loves know. Ibanez. I love. I do genuinely love yeah. Ibanez. Don't know, but it's up in the air. Just don't know yet. Is Urban Discipline a Master Cure, Killer tier album, or is there a spectrum of Urban Discipline tier records? That's really funny. Uh, also, what are your workout splits, routines? How many grams of protein per day? Damn, this is a loaded one. This is a good one. Um, I I think I go self titled and state of the world address over Urban Discipline, right. so it's hard for me to say that it's a the, that it's the perfect one. I think state of the world address is one of the most ambitious, thoroughly thought out and produced hardcore records of all time, and I think self titled is like a a raw gritty masterpiece urban discipline i understand why it's the hit yeah punishment is like a perfect song and it's like a that's that's one of those t- top like top hardcore songs of all time list type hardcore songs yeah. but start to finish as an experience it's my third favorite interesting uh i default to your judgment on that because I, I really only like state of the world address and urban oh, discipline. okay I, mean, I think you'll like self title yeah, well, it's okay. way more punk Oh, right, right, right. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's kind of that. Um, What are your workout splits routines? Protein per day, you try to hit a gram per body weight. Mm -hmm. That's the rule. Per pound of body weight. Per pound of body weight. And it's very difficult to do. Is it? At 230 pounds, I'll tell you what. Yes, it is. With Of of whole foods? Yeah. Yeah, you can take shakes all day, but it's not going to work the same. Not the same. It works differently, but I, I think if you supplement with enough... With something, yes, but you have to keep in mind that your body can only process like 30 to 40 grams at a time. What does so at a time mean? And per meal, like per, per, like per, per like few hours, like you're going to digest, you can only digest 30 to 40 grams at a time. I know, I know someone who would really disagree with that. Well, they, they look good. So <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, I'm just going what uh, people with masters in kinesiology would say, yeah. which is, I mean, and he was clearly born. He was born a little born different. Gifted. Born, <laughs> born different, Built for different. sure. Uh, workout splits routines. This show has destroyed any routine that Dude. I've ever made. <laughs> Not for you, so don't do it me. <laughs> All I'm saying is, I haven't worked out in eight, Wait. you know, eight days, and it's like, <sighs> yeah, I try to tell me about it. Yeah, Mondays, Mondays were you know, push, big push day. I'll Tuesdays call, would be. Like cardio and legs or something. Wednesday would be big pull day. Thursday would be probably full rest. Friday would be like full body cardio. Really? That was that's ideal for me. What do you push? now? When do you push? Push Monday. Oh, yeah, that was your first. Yeah, one. Monday Sorry. is push. Big chest and shoulders. Yeah. So that that's Tuesday, my Tuesday. I'm walking around like a fucking gorilla. Yeah, dude, you know, feels so good. Dead. But like, but like, Jack where, where, where Alana's yeah. like, can you close the fridge? And I'm like, I can't. No, I physically cannot. No, you don't understand. Um, yeah. What's yours like? Monday, Wednesday, Sunday, Friday. Wednesday. I, I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's great. Yeah, I do. Uh, deadlift and then everything associated Monday. Bench press, everything associated Wednesday. 
legs pull, on push, Friday. Legs. Yeah, pull push pull legs. Pull push legs is great. And then something at home, fun accessories at home. Oh, I love an accessory. Yeah. I'm a, my, I mean, honestly, and when I, the fact that I can't make it to the gym means I'm doing like two to 300 push ups in here. Yeah, dude. Doing some kind of shoulder thing. Truly, the, the hotel room push up thing has become a thing. It's the best. Yeah. It just makes you feel like not a piece of shit. Not a piece of shit. Which is. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Point G per pound. Thoughts on CM Punk joining WWE? I think it was a no brainer and can't wait to see where it goes. I've never been this invested in the show. We we can talk. Brief. We watched the Rumble. We watched the Women's Rumble as we were driving from Vegas mm -hmm. and had a great time. Great time. I thought it was the best one yet. Why did you guys get haircuts? I would say, I mean, us with long hair objectively worse it did not work for either of us no and i think maybe when we play live it did of course but that's 30 minutes a year <laughs> <You know? laughs> and and like like posing for like pro yeah when it's like perfectly quaffed and you yeah. can hit the angle yeah where it looks yeah. good it's great but other than that life is a fucking pigsty dude go back and look at any video pictures anything of you you're wearing a hat wearing a hat in a bun. i'm bunned up i'm bunned wearing up. a hat because i hated it it sucks dude and someone else told us that at the AVNs was like, "Why'd you guys? Why'd you cut your hair?" Yeah, I can't. Remember. It's just because it sucked. Yeah, I think it was Brooke Johnson. Yeah, said that. just sucks. It's not fun. It's not, and it didn't. We have very similar hair. Yeah, actually. and it it gets unhealthy. It, gets, it looks it gets, ratty. That to cut that rat's nest off your head, <laughs> you look like an asshole. Cut, cut the mullet. mullet. Shout out to Wesley Willis. Uh, how's the new pit studio coming along? So the the new pit studio is being built from scratch. Literally, the structure is being built from scratch. The, saw a picture. It's the crazy. foundation has been laid, and now the wood for the walls has been built. Yeah, like the frame? The, the frame. frame is built. So, there you go. That's how it's coming along. I watched, this is nice. I watched an old episode last week, and it really shined a light on how much you have grown. I know Bo wasn't going through the best of times back then, so it's lovely to see how happy and confident he is now. Thanks for letting us be a part of the journey with you. I didn't know... Uh didn't know that really came through the episode so much yeah yeah i went through some shit uh, but that's just life babies that's just how it goes it's just life yeah thanks guys hey thanks we've loved that, having you as part of the journey as well that is a really nice thing to read it is and you know we have dark days and bright days over here but we dark months we power we power on <laughs> nevertheless we persist <laughs> uh eleanor roosevelt right <laughs> Can you upload the Gold Dust Woman to, to Apple Music or Spotify? Sure, let's do it. Oh, I, uh, I guess that would be part of the Disharmony session, so that's kind of up to Metalwood. Well, you said you are tired of playing Scrambled. Are there any other songs from Isolation you would like to play besides Breeding Grounds? Parentheses timing? <laughs> um, actually, timing is probably the next most likely mm. because the pit is so obvious and it, it it's generally pretty good. When we uh, did the Isolation show last year, Two years ago? Three, two years ago. Um, I loved playing New Beginnings, which is the one with the big Celtic Frost ending. Is that lot of my stomach just made the most insane uh, noise? It's like the heard. second to last. It goes okay. Pretender yes, or Slither Pretender, blah, blah, blah. Right. Uh, really liked playing that song. I think it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, ti I think Timing would probably be the most likely one. That song is fun to play. Beautiful. Uh, most anticipated video game of this year. It's pretty shot. When this is year. well? When is GTA? Not this. Just twenty twenty five. What about Elder Scrolls? Twenty twenty seven or eight? Really? Yeah, it's not happening. Starfield took everything from us, and then, uh, and then sucked ass. But you uh, loved it, right? I loved it at first, and then it was the most like the thing that was cool about Skyrim or Oblivion or Fallout is like stuff would change. Yeah, nothing changed. It really? was just. The most repetitive. Did you ever finish it? No. Wow. And you like to finish games. I, I do. I probably, I probably put like eighty hours into it. It's a big game. It's holy you know, hell. You know, but you can fucking you can automate a planet. But that's not fun to me. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is like, is like, there's all this stuff, and you're just kind of like, yeah, but where's the fucking? Where's the story? I found out that there is a mission. You're supposed to go undercover, right? Okay. And you're supposed to kind of infiltrate these pirates. Okay. There is a mission that is you can't success like you get caught no matter what 
So you can invest all this stuff peripherally into like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm really a good guy. So I'm going to align all my other storylines with being a good guy, Mm -hmm. not a pirate. And then the pirates catch you no matter, or no. And then the the, space cops, the space cops are like, you went too far. So we're kicking you out and you're a pirate no matter what. Which is, that's not the Skyrim. That's a bad design. That's not the Skyrim. I know that's not choosing the Nords or the, the other guys. Let me tell you. Nords. Choose anything but the Nords. Yeah. You're, a fucking you're kind of a p- bad person. Uh, most anticipated video game of this year would be the Elden Ring expansion. <laughs> Is there an expansion coming? Yeah. Cool. And they, they have the best DLC of any I've, of I've, any developer. I've absolutely heard that. Because the Bloodborne DLC is the best game ever. <laughs> the Old Hunters is the best game ever. It has the best music ever, as you all know. You're all tired of hearing, I'm sure. What is on your, I'm assuming this is meant to say hard lore. What is on your hard lore 2024 wish list? Keep, I don't keep the fucking spirit alive, dude. There keep were, the there flames were, burning. There was something you thought about mentioning. Listen, guys, this whole time we've been doing this show, people have been asking us to do a Patreon. Time has come. It's coming. So maybe next week, maybe next month, we're doing it. We're just working out. The tears are working out. Like, why? You yes. know, like and what, what you get, we want y'all to be happy with it. But we, we just hope, you know, that this is not, this isn't us being like more, more, more. No, nothing this is us, changes. This is us being like, it's been two years. We, we, it's, it's what we are doing is unsustainable. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. travel is an unsustainable. Yeah. It's so fucking expensive. So it's crazy. Uh, so yeah, it's just, that would benefit that. And you know, we'll talk about it soon. Yeah. Keep an eye out. My stomach is going wild. It's awesome. Shot in the dark. Hail Mary guest for hard lore. Um, I mean, it's Glenn, right? Glenn, Jerry Cantrell, Josh Silver. I would really <laughs> Josh like. Silver would be great. Uh, I got one. James Hadfield. I mean, yeah. I could do it. I got one that I would kill for. Gwen. Gwen Stefani. Really? It would be amazing. No doubt is like... Tragic Kingdom is the best ska record of all time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's punk. There's they're covering bad brains and shit, you know. In on Tragic Kingdom? Not on it, but the while touring for it. Yeah. It's way they're covering that. sailing on. I've seen that video. That's way before. No, there's another one where they're playing live at like a beach festival. That's right? way before I've they're, seen they're they're still doing it in the Tragic Kingdom sets. Wow. That's, that's crazy. Fucking rip, dude. And that's cool. Gwen, if you're listening. Gwen or Glenn. Gwen or Glenn, the big two, the big G's. When is it too early to mention modern hardcore bands as legendary bands? I think, I think Terror might be the only current having never stopped band that you can call a legendary band. So that sets the the watermark for me. So, so 2002. There you it's go. It's kind of where it stops. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in terms of like legacy, I mean, Trap and Rice is getting there. Yep. I think they need one, one next record. They're legendary, <laughs> you know? And and let's let's be real because Terror's got ten LPs, or right? Something. But if Ty never came back, they they did it. You know what yeah, I mean? Like I they're, mean, they're I already mean, in. I mean, it's a t- it's a matter of time. It's a matter of in time. two more years. It's been it. Well, in three years, it's twenty years of the demo. Therefore, Holy that's a, that's a legendary band. Maybe that maybe the 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 answer is twenty years. Yeah, twenty years. You're legendary. Twenty years. You're still going. You still rock. You're legendary. I'm just ways at eighteen. There you go. I'm gonna kill myself. Colin, you mentioned you're a big fan of Boys to Men. That is a fact. Are you a fan of Joe Decci? And what do you think of their music? Don't know what that is. I'm a Boys to Men guy. What's Joe Decci? I don't know. What does that have to do with Boys to Men? Joe Joe Decci. You're the only Joe Decci. Oh wow, they they got some old bangers. Wherever my lady. Come and talk to me. Freaking you. I never heard any of these songs. No. I got to do some research. I'm a big boys and men guy. Huge. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. It's one of my karaoke songs. I don't know if you've heard that one. I'm sure I have. You need to care. How do I say goodbye? Um, <laughs> End of the road is tough to sing. So I can't do that one as much. Water runs dry is one I'll hit all the time. Mm. Um tough man yeah motown philly's fun but it's like that that's not what they wanted to sound like you know so that was that was uh so bill bib devote kind of discovered voice to men mm-hmm. and then produced motown philly for them and that's more of like a kind of like a yeah 90s motown philly go 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 oh, I got you. and then they do the fucking scatting thing in the end of, 
four and, part harmony. And then, scat, they, and then they've talked about how like that wasn't what we were. Like we're we're R and B. Yeah. Like we're harmonizers. So that's like on on like the second record they really figured out their stuff. Even on um, Coolie Eye Harmony, they they had they had their identity locked. But then there's still those kind of like. This is the '90s, so you got to do this. Of course, vibe. I really like the concept of harmony being a genre. Yeah, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Their second show was Woodstock, which mm -hmm. is iconic. If you've never seen the Woodstock documentary, it's it's all like the first song on on Cro the first Crosby, Stills, and Nash record is on there, and they say like, "This is our second gig." Oh wow! And it's you know in front of however a hundred thousand people. But they were already like. But they say like, "It's crazy, you guys are here. Thank you for staying up to watch us sing harmony." I just love that as a Some concept. Harmony, that's beautiful. BG's Boys to Men, those are my those are my big two. Why do a lot of modern metalcore bands get labeled as metalcore when they're clearly not a blend of metal and hardcore? For example, how can All Out War and Marauder be a metalcore band? That's the thing I'm talking about. Is right. like that has kind of become a different word. The metalcore is different. It's a different metallic hardcore that's is the now is now the distinction. Yeah. Uh, oh God! Who is winning in an Iron Chef slash Hell's Kitchen style cooking showdown between God Satan and Harm's Way? Dude, I, I'm uh, gonna tell you definitively, it's Harm's Way. Nick, I bring nothing to the table. Nick Brody is he's Chef Ala King. He's dude. Brody Ala King. He is. He's I, good. I, I'm in no way. Did I've never actually had anything he's cooked, but I it's I could tell from watching the streams. He made a Jets pizza from scratch just to see what it would taste like. Unbelievable. I I and I do believe that. Can anyone else in God's Hate cook? I don't know. Taylor's a Kraft Mac and Cheese guy, and he makes a thing called Taylor's, t Taylor's Tuna Surprise. It's pretty good. Uh, Martine, I've never seen cook. I believe he can. I bet Alec could cook something. A Alec, can, Alec makes a mean chili. Alec makes an incredible chili. That's all I've had. Um, Chris eats healthy, has his mom's from Italy. James, <sighs> is he's a grill guy. He's a smoker guy. Yeah, no. He makes cake. I, I can cook. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm confident. I don't think I would be as good as Brody. No, truly, he's good. But Nick, I think, could be as good as Brody. Brody, and then and I think got a couple. Others, I think yeah. that Avengers team right there. Yeah, I think, no, you I guys. Think I think you guys. I think you guys have probably have it. But I'm confident in Brody by himself. But I'm not going to say that we're going to win because I don't think that's right. I think Nick was sous chef Bo. I think we got it. Okay, where's your ideal coffee order? Coffee that makes you feel like home. Let's give each other's. Yours? Uh, you tell me. Yours is, a, yours is a cold brew with a splash of half and half. His is a cold brew with oat milk and a little bit of vanilla. Touch. That's my guy. <laughs> and that's just, and that's because, that's like, um, and it's, it's an insurance policy. A little bit of vanilla, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you could give me the shittiest bean in the world, and that little bit of vanilla is going to be like, this is a pretty good cup. We had a not great cup in Vegas, and mine was water. Because if the, if the cold brew itself has no flavor, then you're just adding a little bit of cream to fucking water. Yeah. A little vanilla in there, you got something. Yeah. It, and it is an insurance policy. It's a great way to... That's all you need. And also, we get other stuff, but the cold brew, the way that we just described, that's the daily driver. It's the one. It's just... I'll, I'll experiment at a place like... Which you're is talking about that on here? I don't want to. Bleep it. Bleep it. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm gatekeeping my favorite coffee in Vegas and possibly the world and definitely the world. Uh, it's really <laughs> good. Uh, top three coffee shops in the 818. We're lacking, man. I'll be honest with you. There's a drought, but House Roots is like the best one. House Roots is like the local great place. It's in Granada Hills. Uh, other than that, man, Tortoni, I really like. They're really sweet. It's like Argentinian. They have like empanadas and shit, so too. Civil is an 818? Civil is 818. It was a chain, though. Oh, I see. It's a small chain. Understood. I'm trying to go like hyper local. House Roots, Tortoni. Ah, uh, God. What's it? That I really like? Reads trash. I, I mean, I go to Civil a lot because it's right there. I love the Sportsman's Lodge mm -hmm. zone. Very nice. Uh, what set are you most excited for at LDB? I mean, hey, hey breed. It's hey, breed. Come on. Opinion on non edgemen wearing edge bands merch. Thank God for you. Yeah. <laughs> Good God. Thank you for buying it. We need you. We need you. We need you. Will we hear any new Dead Body in 2024? Yes, it's recorded. It's coming soon. Uh, predictions are wish list for bands that tied down 24, 2024. Can't do that because we know them. Artist, video game, original soundtrack, Bloodborne, the Old Hunters DLC. Dude, Doom. Oh my God. Doom Eternal, specifically. 
Meshuggah adjacent, just... I'll tell you, Justin and I, at Close Casket, made a legitimate effort to put out the Doom Eternal soundtrack. On vinyl. And it's it's locked down so tight yeah, legally, of course, of course. it'll never happen. Is that Bethesda? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's id, id Software, I think, which is owned by Bethesda. Gotcha. And... And there's a whole legal dispute with Mick Gordon, the composer, and and them that will just it'll never happen. But man, I'll never stop trying. I it want is it so fucking good. And it's not on streaming. If your favorite deceased musician was suddenly back, first four records you'd show them. Wow, that's a great it's really question. Fun. Wow. If Pete Steele was back, I'd show him. <laughs> I love there's no law. <laughs> Gaining purpose. Uh, God's hate by God's hate and. And warning, Cosmic, watching, Cosmic war- <laughs> and, yeah, and warning, watching from a distance because I think that would really that came out before he died, but I doubt he ever heard. I'm gonna say someone other than Peter Steele, yeah, just for the sake of conversation. But if Dimebag was back, I'd legitimately just show him all of our bands. Yeah, he'd be into it. He he absolutely would. And now we know, and we for know a fact from the Joss episode where he talked about domination just being helmet. What a fucking cool guy! So cool. Thank you, Justa, for that. Uh, any severe weather stories while touring? Oh, that's a good question. That's a great question. Um, I've been in more than one California earthquakes, which isn't weather, but wow. natural disaster-ish. You know, they were minor, obviously. Um, lizard stuff, <laughs> some ice stuff, no flooding, no, no tornadoes. James, we didn't talk about it much, but James used to go storm chasing. He was going to be a meteorologist. <laughs> That was his thing. He was he's really into weather and he went to college. <laughs> he's really into weather. It's incredible. I mean, he was into storms and James, he's, that's incredible. He's still and you know what's crazy? We'll ask him about stuff. Like uh-huh. when we're like, do we need to worry about or like flights or whatever? Nah. And he'll just be like, nah, it's gonna and he's right. He looks at like re- Dude, that's crazy because I think meteorology is like the most bogus profession you can have. Like it's b- never right. It because it, it, it what they have to tell is different than what they're seeing they're seeing mm. yes. i got you they can't tell people hey you're gonna be fine yeah because then yeah one percent chance that they're wrong they're fucked that's fun uh there was a patch of ice in new mexico one time that we and every car we slid on slid for like several miles like in unison perfectly slid going like 10 miles an hour most terrifying on-road thing I've ever experienced, other than me saving everyone's life and God's hate, swerving out of the way from a deer. I saved every single member of the band's life. They were all asleep. Um, They'll never know what happened. <laughs> Until now. Deer came out right there, and it was straight up like, I think Leo was awake right here, and it was like a split-second thing where, Damn. with the trailer, oh. had to go... Because it was like... Yeah. And... I'm sitting there shaking, and everyone's like, what the fuck was that? And Leo's looking at me like this. He goes, that was fucking crazy. <laughs> was that an I was Arvin? sitting there like, what? Was that an Arvin? No, it was an Ars. Okay. And I was sitting there like, I think a tear, like right now, streamed down my face, and I was just like, holy shit, I just saved the whole band. Because if I wasn't paying attention in that yeah, split yeah, second, yeah. we're dead. Yeah. But that was crazy. That's not weather, though. <sighs> Favorite piece of hard lore that still remains a mystery to you? Oh, great question. Um, I heard... <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> what did you hear? I heard that Sammy from Goat Whore has the Jeff Hanneman Rain and Blood BC Rich. Oh. I can't confirm that. DK said no. Sean Martin said yes. Who are you going to believe? Sean Martin. So he's got would it. love to know. I love, I know this is the most, this is the nerdiest thing about me. Okay. Game of Thrones, certain weapons are named. Yeah. Lord, of the, Lord of the Rings, yeah. weapons are named. I love the Marcel, concept. Marcel, Andril, Andril, Stang. I love the concept of guitars having a similar kind of legacy, right? One time. That, there's only one of those. I'm going to give it to the Valley Museum, I think. There you go. Yeah. One time, uh, I, it was double cross played with Champion. Mm. I broke a string. Arun gave me a guitar from Champion. Gave me a guitar to play. Just a, a ram? Excuse me. Yeah. Gave me a guitar to play and play the rest of the set. Said thank you to him. And I said, thanks, man. He said, yeah, no problem. Check out the nameplate where it says Les Paul. 
Todd Jones. It was the custom, the, the Les cool. Paul custom. Speaking lo- of Todd Jones, I've never had this debunked by him. But, and maybe, maybe it's not true, but I love it. It's my favorite thing. That he recorded all of the guitars for The Beat Goes On. Horizontal. Like laying down. Laying down. Recording guitars at God City. Now. The whole album. Which is why I took that picture while we were at God City. And now do you recall in the, the making of You'll Never Be One of Us, when he's shooting out sounds, that's what he's doing. <laughs> no. <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, I, I like. I would love to know, like, like um, John Christ's BC mm. Rich is in the Hard Rock in Orlando, mm. which is like, why? Yeah, I'm sure he can get it back whenever he wants. But yeah. so, like, little things like that, like, where is that guitar? Mm. Where is this? You love that. Where is this legend? See, I never think about that, and I, I, and that I, I probably should. Hetfield's '91 White Explorer. Where's that some bitch? Or it would be black by then, but the, the 89 one. I, I'm sure. He's probably got a room. They have, no, Prime HQ has there you go. like 600 guitars. There you go. Uh, best way to get out of your head while performing, how to have the best performance possible in a way that's authentic to you. It's really tough, especially when a mishap happens, like your mic cable getting ripped out in the first song. <laughs> or your your uh, stage hand or unplugging. My, or my, or my, my stage tech unplugging the the sample during the one sample that gets that gets in your head <laughs> um you can't you have to embrace your head rather than get out of it you have to look around and look at the person you have to look at clerp singing along in front of your face and going she's having a good time yeah i should too there's also a fine line between being authentic in yourself mm-hmm. and doing someone yeah you don't want to be too much like somebody in your head you you it's a fine line and it is difficult to define, but um, I think the most important thing is like, if you got to stand still, stand still. I wish you wouldn't, <laughs> Yeah. but if, if that's what you need to do to feel comfortable, then go for it. If you need to go fucking insane and it sounds terrible, okay. It's kind of dope. It's kind of dope. Look <laughs> you at, got, you look at no justice. Yeah. yeah. How to pr- have the best performance possible in a way that's authentic to you. And the way that's authentic to you might not be awesome. It might be kind of, yeah, it might be kind of might be boring. Silly. And the way that's authentic to you is might look at me, make me look at you and go, they're not having fun. Yeah, I don't Why the watch fuck this. would I? Yes. So get a fine balance of performance and authenticity. And that's, the, that's the way. And I'll tell you what, don't watch videos. Just no, don't. be don't, yourself. Don't Just do it. your thing. Uh, what was your best show? What was your worst show? I don't know what that, like hard lore episode? No, or? no, it's got to be pl- performing. Um, best show best show best live performance I've ever seen I think oh, was, I, I, think I would was, imagine it would be ours oh, but I, I like how you interpreted it better I mean it's both throw at the metro at the Oakland metro um, just played it's a tie between God's Hate Sound and Fury two years ago Pushing Tongue Sound and Fury this last year those are two my top two. Best show I ever s- went to was the first Misfits reunion at Riot Fest. <sighs> I, it's, they opened with Twenty Eyes, immediately cried. Oh my god! Just immediately teared up. Yeah. Uh, the moon was rising behind <laughs> the stage. No joke. It was perfect. It was okay. literally perfect. The worst was Matt Skiba and the Secrets. Oh, the worst! I forgot um, about the worst. Yeah. What's the worst show you ever saw? Oh man, I went to see Sepultura one time, and this band Angra opened, mm-hmm. and I didn't stay for the show. I left. Sorry, Angra. Angra recorded a cover <laughs> of Wuthering Heights by Kate Bush as yeah. well. That always comes up as the karaoke option for Wuthering Heights by Kate Bush. And I end up accidentally having to sing their version. It makes me fucking furious. Yeah. So no diss to Angra. I think they're from Brazil. But they've ruined my life twice. Uh, best show I've ever played was our Metro show, the headliner just now. It just felt good, felt right. Family was there, you know, the works. Uh, worst show we ever played we played a show i look back finally it was on the first tour we played a show in columbus ohio mm-hmm. in the middle of january mm-hmm. so it's frigid ricky franz was there oh hell yeah you know it was like it was when he was still columbus guy columbus you know? the drummer of a band called uh triceratops em- empire oh was his band franz band yeah no it's triceratops he then playing played in a band called empire as well but that's a triceratops is wild straight edge band i believe fucking badass um just play, just literally played in my complete winter getup. That cold? Hat, hoodie, coat. Wow. Wish I could wear gloves. That was the worst show ever. Yeah, 
I, that comes to mind. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're in a garage. Sh- yeah, that's tough. Worst show ever here. I talked about two weeks ago. United Blood after show. God's hate at three in the morning. And Ruckus and Zabob at the Cobalt Cafe. Zero paid. <laughs> what uh, piece of merch or record do you regret selling to this day? Oh. My baby blue Fear of Five hoodie. Greg, give, we sell it back to me. <laughs> I need it back. They were man. just talking about that. And where they was. Um, I sold a bunch of shit in like 2000. 10 mm. if i held on to it now my depop would be <sighs> slamming just like locking out shit oh, okay mental stuff yeah. some old straight edge stuff an american nothing shirt oh rare rare um yeah what is the best day job for touring musicians what is the worst jobs you've had i think whole foods is kind of the spot Dude, right lyft and uber oh yeah if you have a car which i don't yeah i don't know if i've ever mentioned that if you have a car, I mean, you can literally make your own schedule, work whenever you need to. Seems ideal. Taylor if- did it for one day because he loves driving. Right. And in that day, he got a girl he went to high school with and a nails fan. And he never did it again. That makes sense. You guys aren't Taylor. No. I, th- I bet you could do it. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I worked at Whole Foods. Yeah. I fucked fish. <laughs> you fucked the fish there. And when then went on tour. I was, a, I was a fishmonger there. I quit to go to Australia because they wouldn't let me. Oh, so maybe that's not the end. Fuck Whole Foods. Okay. Um, but it does seem like barista. I worked at a bakery that was a cafe also. And Parker like, kids who are baristas are heroes. They're keeping this world turning. Dude, also, um, the scooter companies mm. all have a local warehouse. Mm-hmm. So if you got scooters in your city and there's like, you see them all over the place. Find where the warehouses go to the but website. House is, but like, I guess, yeah, best day job. I'm I just know. saying it's 1099. Yeah, yeah. And it's fucking yeah. like, oh, you're around? Go recharge yeah, yeah. these. The best day job would be some fake email job that you can do anywhere, realistically. Yeah. But that's, oh, true. That's, well, that's not. Uh, at home IT. Hey, if you're any good at computers, I did it. Dude, three years. Mm-hmm. I did it. I was out of town a lot. You were asleep a lot. I was asleep a lot. <laughs> Uh, somebody said Fortnite. Absolutely. Been to any great ska shows? Never. Only, only, I've only been to great ska shows. <laughs> Every ska show I went to is the best show I've ever been to. Um, ska fucking rocks. Even the sh- like the shitty fourth wave ska. I'm an apologist of a band called Suburban Legends. You do not like like Mad Caddies. I know it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but I love... Boston's, I think, are genuinely one of the best bands ever. I don't disagree. But like, they do something different. They do something different, and it's be- it's the intention. Yeah, it's they the co- intention that I get. I know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Streetlight always puts out a banger of a show. They ha- they said I just got into them. Cosmic Joe got me into them, and I like that the the horn parts are like ri- like hard riffs. Right. That's yeah, what that's what works me. for me. Riff the riffs, the riffs yeah. which I I really think are cool. Uh, I don't care about that. Will the Twitch Fits cover any songs from Project 1950? How about no? How about no? <laughs> Diana. That's some weird shit. Is Vince McMahon on the Mount Rushmore of biggest pieces of shit in entertainment history? 100%. Uh, out of four in entertainment history? Probably not, just being objective. Is he a horrible piece of shit? Yeah, but we're talking like Weinstein. Yeah, but sure. there's the. this is all we know. True. Think about, oh, there's NDAs, you know? Think about what people did to like Judy Garland. Yeah. People, yeah I would say I, in the past he's in the conversation. 24 years, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Right. Yeah. But all time, maybe, I don't He's yeah. got some company. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> all right, fine. Um, uh, what do you recommend for Portillo's? Oh, I found one in Buena Park, California. I want to check it out. That's a good one. That's my, that's my local Portillo's. It's an hour away. Get yourself a large beef. That's the a bigger one. Don't worry about it getting it wet or dipped. Dipped is crazy. If you want to try yeah, you it, try it. it. You don't need it. Uh, you also don't necessarily need it dry. When I was growing up, I got it dry. I didn't like messy food. Either the way it comes, I add mozzarella cheese, which is unconventional, Delicious. and hot peppers. Delicious. Um, large fry with a little, couple ketchups. Mm-hmm. Large Diet Coke. Get yourself a cake shake on the way out. If you're still hungry. It's crazy that you like the cake shake. Love the cake shake. It's difficult. It is. <laughs> if you're still hungry, uh, the onion rings are amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can add a cup of cheese to your fries. It goes. Um, the uh, the burgers are perfectly charbroiled mm-hmm. and a dog. 
Get a dog. It's in the Chicago go. style. Love the dog. That. Big fan. Holy Grail piece of merch. One you got, one you still want. I have the first Marauder shirt. I've always wanted a Cro-Mags down but not out 89 shirt. I haven't a single Marauder shirt. Do you know that? Um, That's not in my business. <laughs> I My Wolf Moon shirt <laughs> was pretty huge. That was, that was a really nice uh, birthday present mm-hmm. from my ex-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And Holy Grail. Wow. Maybe... Oh, you did today's shirt. Misfit shirt. A uh, real, like, horror business shirt. Do you think that would fit? I feel like they're small meat. They're all schmediums. You know how yeah, um, at you. tattoo shops they have, like, body yeah, 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 prints? Yeah. I want to do that with a couple shirts. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, Next hardcore band to have their song. Oh, wait. What does Bo think of the A18? I love it. I... I we do this all the time where we travel and then we talk on the way home and go, I could live here. Yeah, yeah. But like today, when he got a haircut and I walked up to a blue bottle, it's sunny. There's palm trees. I see mountains. Definitely thought I like, could live I here. could live here. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's like an expensive ass suburb. It is. Of yeah. course. Uh, next hardcore band to have their song featured in a Taco Bell commercial. A Koyo or some shit. I could see Koyo for sure. I could see yeah. Fleshwater. Fleshwater, big time. Theirs are kind of dark sided though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can see it. Yeah, that's true. Um, Dream Hotler location. Zach Bagans Haunted Museum, Las Vegas, Nevada. Please, Zach. The Rave in uh oh, in, Milwaukee? in Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, or the Ambassador Hotel where um Dahmer was. Is that across the street from the rave? It's right there, yeah. <sighs> Stuff, stuff like that, I think, would be cool. Josta, get us in touch. Yeah. Um, any plans for an episode dedicated to European bands? Is that, if that's something you guys would like, sure. It's going to be not that I can name like. It would it would require some 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 uh, research. Some research. Sure. I've talked about rise and fall all the goddamn. <laughs> I'm a big I'm a big kickback guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, Angel Crew rocks. Iron boots. We're big, we're big UK guys. Justice. Say Iron Boots. Oh, that's Richmond. Isn't that's it? Richmond, yeah. Uh, somebody said, do it stink, though. 100%. But that's why we use Manscaped. Manscaped. Hard, 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 hard. Uh, top three albums or songs to listen to while running, doing cardio. This is a great, we were, we were a great just talking question. about that. We were. So, my, the big one, honestly, like one of the reasons I lost a ton of weight was that Murmur record that Pete Morsey made. Yeah. It's like that dark folk record. Something about it was just like, I wanted to hear it so badly that I just started running. It was like, I need to do a thing and listen to this. Wow. Um, so I listened to it over and over and over again when it came out. Uh, and then suddenly 40 pounds were gone. <laughs> um, when I did cardio stuff, it would be Age of Coral. Mm. It would be, I, I, ironically... Uh, Hundred Demons self-titled. See? He's our, he's the, he causes runs. Yeah, that's interesting. Actually, yeah, I never really thought about that. causes the runs. <laughs> but don't uh, do cardio. You don't. No, it sucks. Pixar movies ranked Ratatouille number one, hundred percent with a bullet. Monsters Inc. number two. Love Monsters Inc. I might go Wally number three. Love Wally. That's I'll just do top three. I'm not going through the whole thing. That's great. What's your top three? Uh, what else is there? T- truly, Toy, the Toy Stories. Okay. Uh, the Incredibles, Toy Story Two, Cars. I love Toy, Toy Story, Story Two. Toy Story Two, Big uh, Burger King guy. This guy. Um, I'll say, uh, is Nemo Disney? Pixar. Mm-hmm. Oh, pff. Nemo. Mm-hmm. And then um, said Ratatouille. Not right ra- after Ratatouille. I haven't seen Ratatouille. We should do that today. We could do that tonight. You were like, it's the best movie. I've I've heard it. What were the other two though that you said? Uh, Wally Monsters Inc. and Monster, Wally. Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. I love is Monsters Inc. Unbelievable. is unbelievable. Yeah. Billy Crystal? You kidding me? Yeah, come on. Come on. Put that thing back working on your phone help me. Uh, iced coffee no matter what? No, yeah. I like a hot cup every now and then. The only time I get a hot cup is if we're in a diner. Or if I'm at home. Or if I'm at home, yeah. But I started making uh, espresso tonic at home. Oof. A tonic water. Dude, unbelievable. Oh if you've God. been watching me in the last couple episodes drink out of like a dark glass with ice, that's what I'm drinking. Espresso with tonic. Uh, favorite acoustic album Oasis MTV Unplugged Unfucking believable 
Alice in Chains. Unplugged. Amazing. Yeah, that's number two for me. Is Nutshell that has electric elements on the unplugged one? No, just Nutshell the the record. It's like the songs are acoustic, but then there's are you like jar flies. Awesome. I'm so sorry. Yeah, jar flies. Th- but I do think the purpose is softer. But softer. Yeah. But I think there are some electric things yeah. going on. Um, is Dar is the intro to Darwin a sample or original audio? That's it's a sample from Bad Lieutenant. It's Harvey Keitel. There you go. Would also love to hear how you feel about No God's EP today. Um, I I think I I like it. I think uh, it could do with a remix remaster. I think that'd be awesome. No man. God's nice. I I I think that's where you guys like figured it out. Oh, it was. It was very much. That was when the two dudes quit. Yeah. And- and, the two John's and har- harm's way was truly born. Yeah. Um, did y'all enjoy banging in the rock fest? I had a great time. I loved the coffee shop across the street. Loved it. Um, something I was really stressed out about that weekend for some reason. Can't, can't, that might have been that. <laughs> no, there was no casino there. Yes, there was. In Little Rock? Yeah, you went to it. You told the whole saga. You were in Little Rock for like four days. That was Tulsa. Different place. So sorry. Also. I got you, Little Rock. Uh, no, I just remember being stressed out about something going on that whole weekend, so I was like not having a great time. But our set was awesome, and I loved the coffee shop across the street. Our set was cool. I had just gotten back from Las Vegas. I was just tired. I we got to the show. I had to go to the hotel room and nap for a couple hours. Mm. Uh, favorite Nine Inch Nails song? Wish, probably Wish. Really? Uh, I really like Wish. That song. Um, Hard. It's very hard. I mean, prop probably that's ha- that's what I like. Everything I like about industrial music happens in that song. Yeah, a kind of like like a med, like yeah. that, but but like sounding like various metals. Yeah, the fur- yeah, yeah, right. Um, March of the Pigs Scott, is similar to that Scott, too. Scott. You know, March of the Pigs. No, it's the one that's like. It oh, yeah. oh, March love- right up. Yeah, I love that. Now that song's rocks. Love um, it. And had like a whole. I know it's kind of a cliche, but. A, that's a banger you know if i'm, I'm, I'm more it. of a, a social network score type resident, yeah i'm more of a ross guy the movie seven yeah there type. you go but he's a genius oh i love but i love both trent of them. is a fucking genius I love both of them i'm just never i you know i gotta you know, i got you is what it is what are you gonna eat in texas in march you tell me brother <laughs> also bo what was the reason going for the quad cortex dude the quad cortex is so awesome you saw it i i made a set for weapon x the other day and i just had like my set list ready to rock i can have sets good to go so like we're playing yeah, you had amp presets for each song each song so, and they were all named so that if like you knew how they were starting yeah it was very smart so like for and and then also for harm's way because we have you know we have songs that go that span records i can oh we're gonna play an isolation song where i'm gonna pull up the tones that i dialed in from that record. Oh, we're doing post human. Oh, I can just change amps. Pretty crazy. Fully cues, fully automated, all that stuff. Um, I use a 700 watt power amp with it. It's loud as fuck. I can fly with it. Mm. My whole Pelican, the whole thing is 48 pounds. Ready to rock. That's impressive. It's awesome. I just, it's for ease and for, um, what's the word? Consistency. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I want one. (laughs) Colin, drum, drum rig rundown. I have, a, I have like an Eco X DW kit. It's bamboo. I have a Black Beauty snare. I'm a TRX man, symbol wise. I do, I like like a, a 20, 19 crash wise. I'll do a 16 China splash in the middle. That uh, And then another sp- pair of stacked splashes right above the hats on a little hi hat arm. And an extra, you do, you do three toms, right? I like to do two racks, and that's because I'm left-handed and open-handed. So it's, it's tough. Uh, new Taylor episode, probably my favorite guest. That'd be fun. That's Anything? hilarious that he's anyone's favorite I know. guest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the five-time club is it's getting there. And we need he's jackets. We need the jackets. Um, first instrument ever. Mine was drums. Mine? Really? Hmm? Mine was a... Uh... Actually, what am I saying? Mine was upright bass. Yeah. Were you like, oh yeah, doom, 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 and then it fell over and exploded. You've not told this story. It fell over and exploded. Was it your dad's? It, it was the school's. 
It exploded. How, how old were you? It was in fourth grade. Nine year old. Shit. Why are they sending me home with this? Yeah. From the school. What am I going to do with where is Where is a student putting this? Could you even carry it? No. Yeah. I should have played cello or violin or something. Even a cello would be massive. Would be huge. But like, it, yeah. yeah, it leaned up. It took up an entire room and one day just exploded. Holy shit. Uh, I, I played you. coronet trumpet. Ooh. First, first Can one. you still rip? I, I'm sure I have the ability to, but I really didn't understand music until my dad showed me, here's a guitar string with frets. You, We have a piano. Mm. They're the same thing. That's when everything went in my head. Gotcha. And then I learned a power chord. Um. All right. <laughs> the love of God, how is Switching Tones Batman? Listen. Gotham was in shambles, right? So young Bruce Wayne, you know, devastated by what he's seen and what he's been through, worked tirelessly to change the city, you know? He did something nobody else had done. People thought he was crazy. The police, the, the GCPD was on his ass. Mr. Gordon believed in him. You know, one day, one day, the day came where, you know, other heroes rose up to help Batman. More villains rose up because just at the presence of Batman. But there was one day where Gotham was safe enough just from the idea of Batman. You know? Batman having ever existed made Gotham a safer place to be. Because he could get you. You know? He might be, he might get me if I, if I do a bad thing. So Batman could take some time off. Batman could go away for a while. But that, that never lasts forever. It's Gotham. You know? Wow. It's a dangerous place to be and to live. So every now and then, Batman's got to come back and remind motherfuckers that he's out there. I'm genuinely impressed. <laughs> Costco, by the way. Costco over Costco Sam's Club. Costco over Sam's Club all day. I'm a recent executive member. Um, Where are we? When do we get hard songs by soft bands? Yeah, that'll be coming up. Hey, man, very soon. Probably uh, could have done that today. There's question, Clerk. Question from Clerk. What is your favorite thing about working together, and what is a challenge about working together? <laughs> challenge about working together is... <laughs> Week to week, like day to day, there ain't much together. <laughs> yeah, right. But the favorite thing about working together, it's easy. It's very easy. Like we, this is in, this is this is a great episode. We've also been together since Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. I haven't even thought about it. You know? Yeah, you know, it's literally not an active thought in our mind. The, the most challenging thing about working together is like fucking up. <laughs> Like it, it yeah, is. Yeah. You know, it's not like I ever set out to do so, uh, or I that I, I, I'm like relishing in like carelessness. Yeah, I know. Things happen, and it's very frustrating. Right, and there's That's, there's aspects of this where it's like, it would take more time to send you this file and ask you to help me with it than it would to just take five minutes to do it. But though all of those all things, five like all those five minutes, add up to about sixteen hours. Um, so it's, I don't know, it's tough, but it, you know, it is what it is. We make it work. We always make it work. You set aside a hundred dollars a month for streaming services. What are you buying? Oh, I see. So like of a hundred dollar, um, I would say HBO, Max. HBO max, uh, Spotify, Spotify or, or, or Apple, Apple music, music or both <laughs> shutter. Yeah. You're Big a shutter, shutter guy. guy. Yeah. Um, Paramount Plus was pretty They got some movies. You know what's kind of stacked is Apple TV, dude. Apple TV it's has got stacked. a lot. And I'll tell you what. It's always good. Netflix is pissing everyone off. It's shot. Dude. It's pissing all of us off. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. The recent WWE announcement. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's going to get me there. Peacock. Big Peacock guy. Peacock rocks, but now with WWE leaving, it is like... I don't know oh, that it's dude. leaving, though. YouTube TV. Oh, that's the one. It's Sorry. a YouTube premium, 100%. 100%. It's my favorite movie of all time. It's the best. Deserted Island pick for anything is YouTube premium. Favorite home-cooked meal? Like that I make or in general? I think in general, yeah. My dad is a southern-born, corn-fed motherfucker. And his chicken and dumplings are like, that's the one. Really? That's, that's death row. Very nice. My mom makes big ZD. There it goes. Favorite. There you go. Just had some. Episode dedicated to typo. We're working on it. Don't you worry about it. They all kind of are. Um, grocery store hot bar cuisine, Mount Rushmore. It's the it's Erwan. Erwan is all four heads. And and in there, it's any kind of brisket. Yeah, something without a bone. <laughs> there you go. Um, 
Moe's fucking sucks. Yeah, anybody Mo sucks. anybody talking about Moe's in here? Favorite Lord of the Rings character? Go off, King. Let's go outside of the Fellowship. Yeah. I truly think that Theoden sacrifices the most, mm -hmm. comes in clutch the most, and I'm talking theatrical, obviously. I'm talking the movies only. Um, The guy wakes up Finds out he's been fucking everybody over. Finds out his son is dead. Mm -hmm. Says, I'm going to protect everybody. Oh, shit, they're coming for us. Well, we're going to fend them off. Thank you, Gandalf. But listen, I got to do what's best for my people. Yeah. And you know what? Rohan, or I'm sorry, Gundor calls for aid. And yeah. Rohan will motherfucking answer. Yeah. yeah. And shows up. And then, dude. Twice. Twice. He clears out the orcs on yeah. the fields of light, I think it's called, yeah. is the battle. They all retreat behind the men of the East, who are the mercenaries. He says, form a line, motherfuckers, mm -hmm. and they charge mm -hmm. at those Oliphants. And he dies on the battlefield to the Witch King. Right. He's the man. You know who I like is the Hobbit that doesn't snitch. The one's like, there's no, there's no Hobbit. Ain't no Hobbit here. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's no Baggins here, right? No Baggins here. No, no, no. He, he. Oh, he reverses. He rats. Oh, he says they're all in Hobbit. He's, he, they're oh, down right, there. Right, right. He's a bad guy. So I'm a Rosie guy myself. <laughs> I like Rosie. Sam's, Sam's wife, Rosie. She's my favorite. An interesting thought. I always thought that at the end of when, when they go back, those are. I thought those were his kids. I th well, it's Peter Jackson's kids. I know that, but I, I'm I thought that the guy who's holding the pumpkin is Smeagol. I thought that was. Um, What's his face? It looks just like him. Andy Circus. I thought yeah. that was him. It's not. And it's just a coincidence. It's a guy. I can't believe that. I just put together that guy snitches. I was like, he's a real one. Yeah. But instead, he's, he's just like, no, they're up there. This is where they are. That way, bro. Who's the William Shakespeare of hardcore lyricists? Whew. Dude, honestly, in the eyes of the Lord, some stuff on there. Dude, Bruce is up there. In terms of like sheer intelligence, like. Shakespeare is as a poet, like right, poetry. Right, like defined poetry. Screenplay, even. Well. William, who is the theater. William Shakespeare of hardcore lyricists? Like somebody I, where I hear a big word and I go, how the fuck did they know to say Earth that? Crisis? <laughs> yeah, those are crazy. He's got some crazy lyrics. Those are, those are Shakespearean. Yeah. And biblical. <laughs> um, it's Scott Vogel. Uh covering a track off Lucifuge, what would it be? Probably like Killer Wolf or something? Or, no, nah, it would be it would be Her Black Wings. That's the song that got me into dancing. Or S Snakes of Christ? Long Way? It would be, it would be uh, Black Wings. That's 100%. the one. That's the song. Uh, favorite directors? Takashi Mike. <laughs> uh, I mean, Scorsese. Miyazaki. Yeah. Scorsese. Fucking, fucking, and I really like Denny. Really new. Uh, Kurosawa, you know, love the Coen Brothers. Sergio Leone. Favorite no effects song is the Bruise. The Bruise mm. fucking rocks. It's what made me realize that Oi was okay. As a nice, kid. nice. Top five hate breed songs. Good one. That's so fucking. That's the hardest thing I've ever been asked. All right. Songs. Songs. So I'm going to, I want to purposefully spray. Proven. Puritan. <sighs> Not one truth. These are, these are yours. These are mine. Beholder of justice before dishonor. Could not remember that word. I would go proven. Doomsayer. Severed. 2005 version. Uh, Burial for the Living. Really? The dead and gun, 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 gun. That's Betrayed by Life. Burial for the Living is. Uh, dun 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 Harry King one. Final Prayer, that's a great song. Um, might be Confide in No One. Favorite Norm bit. Uh, the part when he's talking about 9 11, and he says, Don't laugh at 9 11. He's talking to Adam, his co host, and he says, 
I was there. I walked through blood and bones to find my brother. And then Adam, his co-host, is like, Jesus. And he goes, hey, he was in northern Canada. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, Rest in peace. Yeah, All right. Straight up. How did Colin become an amateur professional gambler? I'll be honest with you. So the, the OG gambler that I know is Josiah Hofflinger. Mm. And playing in the Midnight Suns with him, which was a seven inch and two record. We had two records on closed casket. First record is called Ludomania, which means gambling addict. It means addicted to gambling. For some reason, I was inspired by that. <laughs> um, and then the, another big thing is my wife, Lana, became the personal ex- assistant for one of the biggest slot YouTubers. So it's a big, it's a whole crazy community is people playing slots. Watching people play I slots. I won't too. legally say which one, but he was, he's the biggest one. Uh, and she was briefly his assistant. And he, there was a site called Chumba Casino, which got us through the pandemic. <laughs> like, as straight up, like, I would, we did so well on Chumba Casino at some point that, like, it was basically a job. So you lost were, a lot too. Yeah, yeah, of course. A lot. It was, it was, but it was a little over even. That at the point where it was like, okay, I could get groceries this week because I did all right on Chumba. It should be noted for those of you listening who are thinking about dabbling in any of this that like most of the names you ever hear us talking about who gamble along with us are lifetime very down. We're down. We're all down. Very, very down. We're all down. Except for one guy. Except for one guy who's up. But we're all down. Yeah. Um. Hey, you two, planning to go to Sound and Fury this year? Would be interested in getting tattoo in the area. Any recommendations for shops and artists? Go to go down to Holy Union and Echo Park. Mm. Go see, go see Heather Bailey. Go see Olivia Cates. Get it done, man. It's an awesome shop. Heather is edge. She's into wrestling. Those wrestling she's into shows hardcore, dope music and hardcore. She's, she's half of the sexiest married couple to ever exist. Very true. She is fucking awesome. She's done three of my tattoos now. Love her. She's done the back of our both of our necks. Both of our necks. Um, and if you got an extra day, if you got extra time, head on down to Costa Mesa. Go see our buddy Mark Nava at Port City. Um, if you're getting that tattooed on you at all, you might as well have it tattooed by the guy that did it. I love seeing people do that. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Go to Port City or go to Holy Union. Uh, and yes, we'll be at Sound Fury. Yeah, we'll be there 100%. Fa- favorite death metal pit parts. All of my favorite pit parts are death metal pit parts. Thrones of Blood. Fucking... Uh, all of Scourge, Rapture. All of Scourge of Iron. All of Scourge of Iron. Fucking Epidemic of Hate. They're all up there. Uh, albums you'd love to see get the reissue treatment that likely will never happen for reasons XYZ. Reissue. I would love to see Perseverance on vinyl for the first time. I had no idea. Boom. Hard little records. Hard little records. <laughs> Why did you hate Saltburn so much? I just thought it stunk. It was gorgeous looking. It looked amazing. But it was without substance. I even liked the weird aspect ratio. It, just felt, it felt like the first movie I've ever seen that was crafted for TikTok clips. Oh, know? shit. Feels like, and like all of the big moments in it ultimately are for no reason. And they do this, there's like this twist in there that is like the worst least effective mm. like story plot line device i've ever seen and it makes none of the other stuff make sense Interesting. or or be important at all it's terrible death metal mount rushmore orbit angel the aside ultra suffocation okay suffocation morbid angel ultra or cannibal corpse very, very similar. Once Upon the Cross is... <laughs> uh, what Oasis songs would you guys cover in your respective bands? I mean, High Viz did it, but What's the Story is like the only... Morning, morning Glory. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Morning, the song Morning Glory, the opening song off of What's the Story, I think is the only feasible one. Because it's like hard. So I would do I Hope I Think I Know. That's called... And uh, as as we beg and steal and borrow, life is hit or miss. And this, I hope, I think, I know. Uh, and it's the whole thing is like you're like you're gonna miss me when I'm gone. Yeah, right. But 
Fuck you while I'm here. Great Morrissey song, too. Exactly. Or line. You're going to miss me when I'm gone. Dude, you on, don't like me, but you love me in the way you know. Amen. And then or, or, uh, maybe uh, roll with it. Heavy. You got to roll go, with go, it. Go, go, you got to dang go, 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 go. Yeah, that's true. Uh, okay, I think we're at the bottom. What are your thoughts on Columbus, Ohio, hardcore scene as becoming more prominent? I love to see Ohio thrive. I mean, anytime a, 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 a real specific place kind of pops, Best. it's awesome. How cool is Louisville that? Louisville was not an A market. That's, that's really important. The place to play there was a fucking living room. Ten and years now look ago, at it. Ten years ago, it was like, I guess we'll, we'll have a routing show. It's, a, it's the preeminent fest for an entire region of the country. Mm-hmm. And that's honestly because like a, a band. A band and like five people. And like five people worked really fucking hard to make it happen. So that, that could be anywhere. And now they have... The fest in the Midwest. So, and Columbus is, Columbus is, if Columbus is next, I'm in, I'm there. I can't yeah. wait to fucking play Columbus. Yeah. Why does Chain of Strength have only one good song? Glad you asked, Bruce. Um, Chain of Strength does not only have one good song. <laughs> they have quite a few good songs. I won't say they have only memorable songs, but mm. Through These Eyes, Impact, True Till Death, they're all good songs. Yeah. Right. Right. Are they a band that I'm putting on anymore? No. No. Oh, man, I ever put on? No. <laughs> Thoughts on Liquid Death? I love the still water. The sparkle don't sparkle no more. Don't sparkle. From what I found. Yeah. And I love the Arnold Palmer. Armless Palmer. Oh, I've, never had, I've never had that. It's I love awesome. the lime one. The lime but one. again, anytime I find it in any store, it ain't sparkling. It's also got sugar in it. Which... What? All of them, all the sparkling, all the flavored water has sugar in it. Well, you couldn't pay me to drink it then. Yeah. Who gets the couch when Bo visits? Bo gets the Bo couch. Bo gets the couch. What do you think of my new couch? It's awesome. It's deep. That's what makes a good it's couch. Is your, if you're sitting on it with your back all the way to the back cushion, your your whole bottom of your qua, your hamstring yeah. should be couch. Yeah, yeah. So that you got room. If you're sleeping on it, you got room. I love a chaise lounge. It's got a nice chaise. Mm-hmm. I get the couch. See? And it didn't fit through my front door, so they had to bring it in through this window. It was unbelievable. This? It was this window. It was unbelievable. How did that? Four fit? Russian guys. How did that? Fit? I have a video. Here it is. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Can you believe that? I can't believe their it. names were straight up like Vladislav, Vladislav, Alex, <laughs> and and Matt. Jeff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeff and Matt. <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, who are y'all's favorite moshers and divers? It's an amazing question. Because I didn't talk about Jeff from Florida in the FY episode. I love seeing Jeff from Florida go off. He's got a great style. Mike Body. Sebastian Paba. Uh, Moshers. Let's see. Uh, John, John, John Scanlon. <laughs> uh, John from Vane. And John from Vane. Hard Mosher. Yeah. Um, trying to think if there's anyone specific who divers. I know. Divers. Riley Mice used to be one of the great divers. He's... He, he was, uh, in, he was in uh, Souvenirs. He's a Santa Barbara guy. Believes 5G will kill us all. Oh, now. okay. That's so, all that diving. <laughs> Good for the mind. Yeah. yeah. Uh, favorite, pre- favorite part of AVN, and will you be going again next year? We would love to come back based on what we did. Favorite part of AVN was just how welcome everybody was. It's also really, like, pro. So, so pro. like, we checked in, got our shit, got right in, never we got hassled. We were in in a minute. Yeah, never got hassled. Um, got our credentials, no problem. Got through security, no problem. Like everything was just like very like. Oh, here you go. And it was inside a casino. Inside a, a really, really nice. Really, casino. really liked that. You believe fo- folks fully understand the influence of the band called Death? Death, uh, the other Death, was a black punk band that fucking kicked ass. Mm. And my man Corey here from Move has a great point. So no, I don't think. But I think there's a documentary about them. So check that out. I, I definitely don't think. They get their just deserve. Yeah, no. they don't get their flowers for sure. Um, how do you feel about the split between punk hardcore and metal hardcore? Can we both exist in harmony? I don't think those two things have ever been more unified than they are right now. So I except think we're for, in a beautiful time. Except for maybe like Agnostic Front era, like early Agnostic Front New York. Yeah, when when like only Paris made the, making the distinction of like I don't like being called a punk. I think it's yeah. that's like a mean thing. <laughs> that's the only time when like it was more unified. Yeah. Than right now. Yeah. I think they are currently like knock loose and the chisel could tour tomorrow, and we'd be like, "It's a badass line." I'm on my way. Yeah. 
a movie. You guys feel that music videos are a lost form of art? I feel like people st- tend to skip over videos at this point. Shit is expensive, man. I think we live in a time when video and digital media are so accessible and so rapidly thrown in your face, whether it's TikTok or Reels or Shorts or whatever, that making one that grabs someone's attention is really difficult. MTV used to be dedicated to just showing cool shit. Headbangers Ball used to be dedicated just to just showing cooler and shit. And now I could, I guarantee you, I would bet you a million dollars that if I turn MTV on right now, ridiculousness is on. Yeah, there's no music video. There's it's no it's music Fail video. Army, which yes. I have that. I'm YouTube. a subscriber.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, and I think it, 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 it's really difficult to grab someone with a video. I think Knocked Loose did an excellent job. I think Code Orange did Orange an excellent job. Orange always does a great job. Well, just make something, making something that, th- this should be the goal with any art. Something that somebody wants to experience twice is, wow. dif- is difficult. Wow. So just try to think about that as your goal. That's why I made one that's 40 seconds long. Is Colin on any shirts and sleeves? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> story of how you ended up playing drums for Stigmata. Uh, Twitching Tongues brought Stigmata on tour uh, on the In Love There's No Law tour. This package was Twitching Tongues, Turnstile, Stigmata, Downpressor, Angel Dust. Pretty good. Uh, on that tour, Stigmata knew Taylor played in Nails. They asked Taylor to play for This Is Hardcore because both Jason Bittner and Derek from One King Down could not play. Uh, Taylor said, I can't. I'm not good at filling in for bands, but you should ask Colin because I hear him playing these songs right now. Like they, This was like, really? Hymns was like my warm-up record. Uh, so they're like, we, we didn't know he played drums. Can you send us a video? So I put, sent them a, a video of the record and half of Do Unto Others. And they're like, oh, okay, you're in. <laughs> we didn't practice. We didn't. We we had a a five minute conversation about the set, yeah. which, as I've discussed, that's why there's a mistake in there. It wasn't my fault. They yeah. didn't tell me they were doing an extra thing. Right. I played it like the record. Yep. Um. I watched that set from behind you. Yeah. And that's all. It was right behind. That's you. all that happened. They just asked me because Taylor said no. C standard or C sharp standard? C sharp. C sharp. Yeah. Why? Like carnivore. <laughs> that's right. And master killer. Uh, have you ever two jam two, two ever jam together? Or thoughts about collaborating musically? I mean, I'm on a Harm's Way song for one. Yeah, all the monks, the rest. We haven't. We have other than Pennywise practice. Space. <laughs> That's true. Other than playing, we got to know on Pennywise's gear at the Punk Rock Museum. Uh, who is stronger? Colin is strong. Chili. Chili's Chili's is strong. Worst Metallica song, and why is it I disappear? Dude, that is not the. That's actually I'm objectively not, not yeah. the worst song. Yeah. yeah. Kind of ghost. You ever seen a ghost? Yeah, but I've told the story. Hey, hey, hey. What was the best year for hardcore releases? 88, maybe? Hmm. 89 was good. 94, 94 was amazing. 94. Because you get, those Set are era defining. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you're right. Um, guilty pleasure band like secretly you love yourself some Breaking Benjamin type stuff I don't believe in b- guilty pleasures let me just say that but Creed has so many fucking tracks that you just wouldn't believe it okay? I, ge- I genuinely believe that Disturbed has lots of good songs the red one yeah the red album yeah the red one uh, it's bangers and indestructible I don't know that was that the first one okay oh mommy hey mommy why are you yeah, that, part sucks. that part's crazy I love the tweet about that where they're like, does anybody remember the part in the Disturbed song where the guy's mom entered the studio and started beating, beating his him. ass? <laughs> <laughs> um, Yaw Farms, baby, the goat. Thoughts on recycling your own riffs when writing new songs. I think this is a very creative way to A, do something. It gets the OG fans excited and, mm. and it's kind of a nice little cheat code. We also talked, we realized Seekers of the Truth and mm, other side of madness and then kind of you know smart it's there then you just change the tempo a little bit and we don't it takes somebody what 20 years 21 years to put it together yeah oh yes 31 years to put it together oh yeah yeah uh 
Hardcore subreddit or hardcore Twitter? Which one's worse? Pretty, both pretty the bad. Sub, the subreddit. For subreddit sure. is for sure worse because I think I mean hardcore Twitter people. I see in real life. Right. So some of them. Everybody on hardcore Reddit is anonymous. Um, elaborate on the story of James screaming coke. Oh, did I not ever really tell this? I story? think you did, but it's the best thing ever. Uh, we had just gotten back from Australia probably like on a Monday or Tuesday, we're all jet lagged. Nobody could sleep. We had to leave for this is hardcore on a Thursday or a Friday after practicing. So we drove overnight from Chicago to Philadelphia, which is like 12 hours overnight. James developed bronchitis. Oh, Jay also got very sick. Uh, they slept in the hotel room the whole day. We, the rest of us were at the fest. I went and picked him up. We played the set there's a picture of me like smiling and waving and I'm facing a wall. Like it like I don't really I remember looking at my hand. You guys being, were fucked up. I right? remember looking at my hand and being like, Thank God. Like you know what you're doing. <laughs> like I was really not feeling great. And yeah. then after the set, James like had bronchitis screaming into that mic. God, I hope whoever sang out of it next it was okay. Yeah. We're outside, we're talking to Justin Loudon. And I was like, James, you want anything to eat? There's a food truck. Nah, man. And he and he said, yeah, he said, nah, nah. Right, right, right. And then as I was walking away, his voice was shot. He was just going, go, 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 go. <laughs> and I didn't hear him. <laughs> oh, my God. Incredible. Uh, gay son or thought daughter. I will never in this life procreate. I will never yeah. make a child. N A. If I did, I would hope that one child would be both of these things. I would love a gay son, gay who, son is my thought who is my thought daughter is the, is the answer. Dead by the tribal gays split. When's that coming this year? Are you both going to be at outbreak fest? We would like to, but it costs a lot of money to get there. But I will and be. No, yeah. Okay. That's announced. Oh, good. Oh, we'll be there. Uh, bring back the disharmony rust episode. It was awesome. It was still is. When's the video games episode. I don't know how to do that or what you want to hear. <laughs> Terminator, uh, oh, that's this is a great one. Terminator, Terminator Two, it's T Two all the way. Much, but it's a similar comparison to Alien and Aliens. Mm. One is like space horror. Mm -hmm. One is an action, space action. Mm -hmm. T One and T Two is one is like a sci-fi horror, yeah. and one is a sci-fi sci action. action. Yeah, it's T Two. It's T Two. It's not even close. Even yeah. just driving around here, I see like the the the, the overpass the over Sherman the Oaks Gallery, yeah. the, where the Sherman Oaks Arc Light was, is the that's the mall. That's the mall. Yeah, the where light, that poor the, the guy just gets fucking annihilated. I know, but the the real the redheaded kid from Pete and Pete, the real one, doesn't. That's 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 a, that's a real. That's who should have been in Hobbit. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Should have had him. If y'all were to start your dra careers as drag queens tomorrow, what would your drag names be? This is good. Bowen. No, no. Hooters. Bone, yeah, exactly. Bone, <laughs> bone hooters. I've never thought about this. I think my mom was going to, my parents were going to name me Samantha if I was a girl. They were going to name me Dawn. So Dawn. The, Maybe I, Dawn, Dawn is a. Dawn is very drag. Dawn the Don? Yeah, I would be like Sammy. Maybe mine would be Sam Witch. Whoa! <laughs> Just a fat witchy. Just the, I would be, the, I would be a big girl. <laughs> Sam Witch. I love that. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Uh, does that mean we, since Harm's Wife is playing Outbreak, and we get a live hard lore again? Last year's was incredible. Uh, we were. We would love we to do in. it. We're in. But but the the actual logistics of doing that tough tough, tough. to do. It's expensive. Expensive to get us there. We well Harm's Way ain't just doing a one off. Right. Exactly. So it's true. I don't know how that. So would it have to all happen in one day. Um. What's your opinion on traditionally hardcore fests starting to book more bands from outside of the genre? I think if it works and the audience wants it, that's the move. I think I think it's borderline a necessity. Yes. And you have to evolve. You have to listen to people. And if something works, you follow it. You listen to it. If it doesn't work, i.e. Sound and Fury before Martin and Riley got it back, you've done something wrong. If you if you if you misstep in a way that if you get greedy like some guys did. Uh, and then it's not going to work. But you got to listen to the people. Do you have any plans to come together to Europe again this year? How well can Bo, be, Bo speak German? Um, besser als dich for English. That's just for you. Nice. Very good. I, I don't have any plans yet. I would like to. Um, let's see. What's the, what's the, what could we do as the worst one? Or like the sorry, the last one. I was reading the word worst. Yeah, I saw that. 
Um, talk th- top three hog riff bands. What does that mean? What does that mean? Howl Griff. Howl Griff, like Southern? Like so, Yeah, like Southern. It's Crowbar, Crowbar. It's, it's Down. <laughs> it's Crowbar. Pantera. And it's I, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go to the, or what's your favorite wrestling finisher? This doesn't have to be the last one, but Burning it's, Hammer. Burning, yeah, that's right. 100%. Burning Hammer. Fucking brutal. Right dude. on his goddamn head. Yeah. Mine's Razor's Edge. There you go. I can tell. Um, going to Japan in October. Any suggestions on what to hit up? Um, this will be my first time on a plane, and I'm stressing. Any oh. tips on how to deal with anxiety during a flight? This is a this is a loaded question. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, first of all, the flight. Just bring stuff to keep you entertained. Something to do. You're most likely going to have a TV in your seat on you know? an international flight. It's it's pretty much guaranteed. Pretty much. Although when we went to Japan, the flight to Hong Kong was. I was in the middle of a five seat row with yeah, nothing. Right. I've been that was my flight home from Australia and Japan. Domestic planes. Yeah, domestic planes. It's brutal. Um, but I, I'm almost positive that's not that wouldn't happen anymore. Almost oh, positive. So. Look it up ahead of time. You can always check. Yeah. You can check what plane you have. Bring your- get nice, fully charged noise canceling headphones. That's huge. Because the plane is loud. Very loud. The the white noise of the plane is itself is loud. Japan in October I'll be there uh, at the end of February. I'm going for 10 days on the longest vacation I've ever been on. So I'm going to have a bunch of episodes mm. ready to go so that nobody misses anything. I'm going to work my ass off and get it done. Record store, go to Nerds. Go to go to Nerds, for sure. That's an independent store uh, run by Hardcore Kids. And then Disc Union is everywhere. Oh, okay. There's a bunch of them. Mm. And they all have a Hardcore Punk floor where they got like like vintage shirts really japanese punk records for no money american punk like i have five deadly venoms uh i have a famous monsters picture disc you know that i got there for 20 bucks holy shit so it's go to go to every disc union you see because they all have different stuff and two more points there's a awesome youtube channel that is traveling all around japan it's completely it's like there's no words Mm -hmm. it's completely just ambient noise it's awesome taking ferries and buses and trains and stuff all over and like eating and like the best ways to do it and pack yourself a little like sleep bag they call it it's just like a little pouch with like maybe some mouthwash deodorant mm. face scrub kind of mm. guys freshen up on that plane after you wake up from your the only nap you'll really take yeah you'll feel really good interesting i didn't know that it does it for me so you know february is going to be busy for me but we'll, March is going to be busy. March is going to be. I'm going to every weekend. So the next two months, I'm going to have. I'm going to. We're going to load stuff. At some point, there's going to be a three week run of of the New York Hard Lore saga, and my God, that stuff is good. And then we've got Brandon and Sanieri coming up. We've got Trey from Dying Fetus coming up. AVN. AVN coming up. We got the Punk Rock Museum. The Punk Rock Museum coming up. I think we're set. I think we're good. Thank you all so much for joining us this week. We love you very much. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.